is the size of that bat. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Of the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series 2022. We're right in the middle of it right now in La Crosse, Wisconsin on the upper Mississippi River. Good Sunday morning to you. We have 47 anglers. The takeoff is just now starting on this day. You can see it right now. They're going to get out and be fishing very, very soon. A lot of them don't have great distances to travel on this day, and we have got a heck of a tournament going on, this being the end of the season. A lot of questions still yet to be answered. Most of them will be answered over the course of the next two days. This is semi-final Sunday. And all these anglers gunning for 10 spots in the final on Championship Sunday. And Mark Zona, we have so much talent, bunched so close together. You can't afford a misstep here. You got to have a few things break your way. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. $100,000 at stake. And if you are not already qualified or in the cut for the Bassmaster Classic, if you're way outside of that cut, a chance at a classic berth. You punch that ticket if you are not in that cut line. And one angler we are going to watch today, Keith Combs. He is on him in a big way, and he needs the victory this week. And the great thing about this tournament on the Mississippi River, if you joined us yesterday here on FS1, they are catching them in a big way, especially the first 90 minutes of competition. Every day of this tournament has been absolutely out of control. Well, it's a big, big day. A lot of guys have an imperative to make it to the top 10. We will lay all that out for you. We'll take a look at our unique, unique playing field this time. All of our nine tournaments through the year are a unique playing field. This one offers some special challenges and some special opportunities as well. Very hard for someone to bust away and run away from this field here. It's going to be tight. And Tommy, take a look at this leaderboard, the tightest leaderboard we have seen all season long on the Bassmaster Elite Series on a semifinal Sunday. 31 14, 31 13, 31 12, <laughs> separated, literally three ounces separating the top three anglers. And the great thing about that is these guys are going through 30, 40, 50 fish a day to get to the biggest five bass limit. And really, the one thing to watch today, you don't see him right there on your top 10, is Brandon Polinick, who had a brutal day trying to lock up the progressive angler of the year title, his second. Angler of the Year title. Yeah, this is one of the two main accomplishments a, a, an angler can achieve in the course of a season, in the course of a career. And Brandon Pollock shooting to be only the 12th angler to ever win two of these uh, vaunted trophies here. One big thing for him yesterday, Tommy and Z, is that him making that day three cut has boxed out Chris Johnston. The best he can do is tie him in Angler of the Year, and Brandon Pollock would get the nod. The only man left in his, his rearview mirror is Brandon Lester today, and we'll keep an eye on both of those. But yesterday, like you said, a very tough day for Polinick. It did not go like he had hoped to close out the year. No, Brandon Polinick said, really, if I could just go catch a quick 10 pounds upgrade from there, I have a pretty good shot at locking that Angler of the Year title up. Well, that was not the case. By about midday here on FS1, Brandon Polinick had zero fish. It was really from about 10.30 on, catching a five bass limit over 11 pounds, barely sneaking in the cut. Got a text from Brandon Polinick. Can't quite read all of the words in that text. It was a very, very tough day. Somehow, he caught that five bass limit. Obviously, still in the driver's seat and really still his fate is up to his fishing today. What's absolutely incredible is his last keeper of the day was a 1-4, and he's in the cut by just one pound, one ounce. As we take a look at our top 10, KJ Queen, Brian New, Luke Palmer at the bottom end of our top 10 as we go up to Gerald Swindle. Gerald Swindle, a great day, a great tournament for Swindle. He's got a lot of experience here. I know you're looking at him to be a guy to watch today. Drew Benton having a terrific season as well, always dangerous, especially on river fishing. Yeah, and one of the things to really keep your eye on guys like Scott Martin, who said, look, man, I want to make the classic, but I want to win this tournament, along with Keith Combs and a lot of these anglers in your top 10. We said this yesterday on this broadcast, the first 90 minutes are so critical that their spots out on the Mississippi River reload. One of those anglers said that is Chris Johnson they, from Canada. Oh, no, I, I didn't go in there yesterday. That's Brandon Polinick, of course. He's I went in there in the AOY points, day. but it is not over yet. He said yeah, yesterday like, at the weigh-in, like he ought to have the word baby. drama stitched but onto the pocket moves. of his jeans. He has uh, certainly had more of it than he wants during the course of his career, some of it in his history here in lacrosse. Exactly right, not the best history here really kind of just made the comment, if I could just stay yeah. consistent in this tournament, 
and he really felt after day number one that wasn't going to be that hard. Uh, it has been hard the often whole week long. You see a guy just sitting when they have a live camera because normally the live cameras are with the top ten and they have already left. Uh, but every day three, the guys in the second flight, so below 25th, we have to wait 30 minutes. So everyone has equal fishing time on day number three. So first flight will check in at three. We're checking in at 3.30. So we sit and wait for 30 minutes. Uh, hang out with your buddies and chat, I guess. Uh, think about what you've done wrong to get yourself into this position or what you've done right to get yourself in this position and you're not sleeping in at home right now. So uh, we sit and wait. Tackle's ready. We just got to get after him. But we have well, to wait for 30 minutes. Here has been a story of doing more him. right than doing wrong, but his wrong came at the wrong time. That's a good way to put it, I think. And really looking at Brandon Polinick's season right there, owning the Angler of the Year race until Lake Oahe last week. And that was a tournament that, uh, as Ronnie said, he was on pretty much everybody's fantasy fishing team. Brandon Polinick with an unusually slow smallmouth tournament. And he talked about it before that event. He said, I had a terrible practice, very similar to this week on the Mississippi River. Brandon Polinick, you see that multiple top tens for him. He's always been a high shooter. He's going to be consistent throughout the year for sure, but he is always one that can make a lot of top tens. This week, his two closest pursuers, they're the ones in the top ten, and he had to just survive. So it is so tight. He is one pound, one ounce from being in 47th place in this event, which is the last guy I'm fishing today, but he does not want to drop below his magic number of 38th. You see 37th right now. That is official after two days. After today, if he's above there and he's still in 37th, he is angler of the year, but if he falls before Fourth, below that, there's still a chance Brandon Lester can catch him. And Brandon Lester, for everybody at home, has to be in our top 10 cut for yes. Championship yes. Monday to still have a prayer. If Brandon Polinick does not solidify it by his own destiny, his own control today and get in the top 38, we will probably see fireworks on Championship Monday. Taking a look at Brian Schmidt, second place. He was our day one leader with 17 pounds and 10 ounces. He certainly overachieved here and has a great record here as well to look out for. Yeah, and the one thing to watch with Brian Schmidt, Matt Airy, a lot of anglers, Brian New, running about, call it 12 to 15 miles down towards an area known as called Stoddard, and that area has received so much pressure. That being said, it also has kicked out a lot of your top 20 stringers so far. <laughs> Well, this is a magnificent place to end the season here. It's a longtime destination for the Bass Masters. Three of the pools on the upper Mississippi River, pools seven, eight, and nine. Two of them about 20 miles in length, the other one about half of that. And uh, it's not the length, but the width that really gives the character to the place. Exactly right. It's a giant maze throughout this system on the Mississippi River. A little bit of action going on down in nine. Have a couple anglers in our top ten, but it's really when you get up to pool eight, the pool that we are putting in here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. That has received the most attention. The reason why looking at this hummingbird unlocked the lake, pool eight, about 20 miles long. As you said, Tommy, though, it's the width, it's the maze of vegetation throughout this system. And the main reason so many of these anglers concentrating on pool eight, maximizing their fishing time, not dealing with the locking system, whether you go up to pool seven, Lake Onalaska, or down to pool nine. That is your hummingbird unlock the lake. Well, as we say, things are so tight here, no one definitely has dominated. Far from it in this one, but the most consistent of all is our leader, Chris Johnson, 16-4 on day one and 15-10 yesterday. He holds the lead by a single ounce. Yeah, and it's really his starting spot yeah, that he's was hoping, at least after day number one, would reload, catching a couple bonus largemouth yesterday, but for the most part, just very, very solid smallmouth in this area, and he left them biting. I mean, the first hour of competition yesterday, Chris Johnston knocked their lights out. Obviously, one of the most powerful smallmouth fishermen on the Elite Series, doing it a little bit different way here on the Mississippi River, but a very special one-cast smallmouth area for Chris Johnston. For Chris Johnston, what a flurry he's been on to end the season. His last six events have been all in the top 20, most of those being in the top 10. 
He has really came on strong for this Angler of the Year race, but falling just a tiebreaker basically short of being able to win this event. A lot of the locals that are watching him think that his area is special this week, and we'll see if it holds up for four days. But, Tommy, <laughs> he's not foreign to winning on the Bass National Elite Series. No, it's definitely one of the most celebrated anglers in Canadian history, and he became the first Canadian angler to win on the Bassmaster Elite Series two years ago two in ones. 2020 at Lake Ontario. Just a mastery of this type of the sport. And if you really look at what Chris Johnston's done all season long on the Bassmaster Elite Series, granted, he does not have a shot, as you said, Ronnie, to win that Angler of the Year title. Absolutely, you will probably see him in the mix again next year, 2022. Uh, good morning, good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, Tommy Sanders, Mark Zona. Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon joins us as well during the course of this day. And guys, we uh, so tight, everything so tight together. Now, Chris Johnston is an incredible angler, but he has far from locked this thing up. We have got a big day with some turnarounds on the way. And the one thing that I said yesterday uh, throughout this broadcast, the one thing to watch right now with a lot of your leaders is the guys that have a starting spot that number one reloads every day with dozens of bass and the other thing is kind of getting away from the crowd your leader from day number one brian schmidt so much company where he is starting every day of the tournament you look at a chris johnston you look at other anglers like keith combs that's making a long run totally totally left alone not near any other competitors. That's going to be a big factor here today. Uh, Ronnie, we talked a lot about Brandon Polinick, his leadership. The, the man in pursuit of him is of note. Well, Brandon Lester has had an incredible season. He deserves a lot of credit for getting to where he's gotten today. Yeah, if Brandon Polinick can pull off this Angler of the Year run and win it today or tomorrow, depending on how it shakes out, he would be the 12th Angler all time, basically from uh, Such's notebook over here, that the 12th Angler all time to win more than one Angler of the Year trophy. But like you said, Brandon Lester, really a coming out season. Zero wins on the Bassmaster Tour over his first seven years uh, out here as a pro. Winning two events this season, Lester has definitely came out very strong, and now AOI is in his sights today. He has to make the top ten to have a shot. Well, again, thanks for being with us this morning. If you've not checked out this tournament so far, we can tell you we are going to see lots of fish catching today. We'll have, we'll have lots of rain and, and, and soggy weather, but they're going to catch them nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, you could not ask for better conditions. Definitely a low-pressure system. A little bit lighter wind today to start competition. Competition and it, it goes near what we got to see yesterday morning. Fireworks right off the start. And an extra hour of fishing with no delay this morning. That'll help that as well. Everything. We got a lot ahead of us today. A lot to sort out here at the last event of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. The guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at the Mississippi River is sponsored by Hummingbird. Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Just had our launch minutes ago here in the state of Wisconsin, La Crosse, Wisconsin, a big week for Wisconsin fishing. Here's part of the story as well. Wisconsin Jay Shakura winning, taking it. The Rookie of the Year prize. Very owned impressive it. performance. Absolutely owned it this season. Made the comment, most rookies that come from the north are supposed to struggle down south. Most southern anglers that are rookies are supposed to struggle in the north. That was not the case with that man right there, Jay Shakura. Really, really sealing the deal. and. Here's the thing, looking at the final standings right there, blew it away, blew Cody Huff away, especially throughout this event. And don't count Jay Shakura out in this tournament right Oh, no, now. absolutely not. Very, very dangerous guy, 23 years old, youngest to ever live, or to, to ever win on the Elite Series. I went back and back and back in the archives to see what the biggest rookie of the year He's gap the from first ever. to second, and 90 points, guys, that is one of the biggest margins I've ever seen for the Rookie of the Year race, Z. Our progressive angler of the year race is down to two anglers. And here's one of them right here, Brandon Lester. What a fantastic season. The only angler to make all seven cuts wow. this year. Starting in a spot that we saw late yesterday afternoon, loaded with smallies midday. Pretty much has lived on the top end of pool eight the entire tournament and 
kind of hopscotched around Brandon Polinick a lot this week. But he had a much easier day, too, than Polinick did. area where he did most of his damage on day number one but it was a it was a party below that old always Alaska is spillway yesterday yeah. always is that was starting the day and six had a fantastic day number one fell off the pace just a bit yesterday how's a bike I think he's a keeper. Look how fat though. Keepers have to be 14 inches. Nope. 14 inches in length, all species. Something key for Drew Benton. Real fished around Kobe sign. Krieger yesterday, who also caught a good bag, but Kobe said on stage that he got him in a different area in the afternoon and called out all so of his about fish. Where I was like, you sit right he may here. avoid this area this morning. Too small. Good, healthy fish, just too short. Ah, quarter inch too short. watching Brandon Lester all day again his uh, imperative make the top 10 over the course of this day that way still got a shot that progressive angler of the year what a terrific season though even before we look at this list he started off with a St. Croix Bassmaster Opens win on Kissimmee in Florida that kind of set the tone for his year sure did in one of the tournaments that he absolutely owned Pickwick his first Bassmaster Elite Series victory but really consistent all year. He's really been consistent his entire career, but this is as close as he's by far he's ever come to winning the Angler of the Year title. You mentioned it, Tommy, the only angler to make all nine day three cuts. What an incredible feat that you're fishing. When you're fishing on payday, every single event, you know it's been a good season at minimum, and now he's making a hard charge. And with not even his best finish as the last two events leading up to this one, he's just maintained while others have fallen and really suffered. He has just stayed just so rock solid. Eight years he's been through his rookie and journeyman years, and he has definitely this season stepped well on into that top, top tier of anglers. And he'll be on our short list of favorites thinking about Knoxville in the Classic next year, that he's obviously punched his ticket for that, along with everyone else in the top 43. And his previous best in the AOI race was Sixth place in 2019. He's about 40 points back of the leader. It's a good year. 2019 was also the closest points race we've had compared to this year. I switched it up a little this morning. I've been starting on a little schooling spot, a little bar out on the river. With these clouds and this rain and stuff this morning, I switched it up a little bit and decided to come up here to the dam. I caught two good smallmouth up here yesterday and had an opportunity at two more good smallmouth. So with this weather, I'm just, I kind of changed my game plan up a little bit. Coming up here, I feel like, I mean, I'm, I, I know there's an 18 to 20 pound bag of smallmouth up here. I'm not saying I can catch that, but it is possible. I promise you, they're swimming around within 200 yards of my boat right now. So 
We're gonna give it 45 minutes or an hour up here. I can already tell they're not as active as they were yesterday when I was up here, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give it some time and just see. These are the conditions you want. If these river smallmouth, these are the perfect conditions to catch a big bag of them. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and, and see. The birds are real active this morning. These fish, they may not be on this wall. They may be out there. There's a sandbar right out here, so they may be out there. We'll just have to fish our way around and see what's going on. It looks like any minute they're going to get some rain. Brandon Lester back over to Drew Benton. This is a bass, it's the right one. Oh yeah. Yes sir. That's how we'll get this day started right there. <laughs> Big old fat headed one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Point eight inch big bite pro swimmer swim bait. We've seen a lot of swim baits below that on Alaska spillway over the years. Yeah. This week, yeah. Past winners. Past winners. Yeah. Another one. Yes. That's a good one. Gosh, those fish are built. Feeling it. Mm. Tommy, did you stare his cameraman down right there? I, I, I think he did. I think he did. did. I think he did. Intensity. Right. Yeah. Slow that motion. Was a, two, three pounders right, you know, right out of the box. That's strong. Every single year we see someone do well and beat out the crowd here at the spillway. It, and Mark Zona, what's the difference? I mean, there's fish in this area, but when this current does flow through some of these places, it just positions so many fish in such a tight spot that you can get right in a hurry compared to anywhere else on the river. And it, would, and it doesn't mean just because if you get it, there was anglers that got to here yesterday yeah. that did not catch them at all, but Drew Benton deciding yesterday to not get in the mix too long with the other anglers of the pressure that was in here, but also he made the comment, of course I'm gonna start up there having a low no, boat number this morning. I mean, just staring. His camera down, <laughs> tweaked out of his gourd. Look at him. Oh, no. Oh, Not even yes. flinch. Oh, yes. <laughs> what is going on there? You gotta love that. Drew Benton's only Mass Master Elite Series victory. Came on to one, another one of America's great rivers. The, uh, you mad, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Colorado River, Austin, Texas, Lake Travis. All right, I got to start on my s spot this morning. There's a few of them up there. This is the right one here if it's a bass. Please be a bass. Gosh, that looks too big to be a bass. That's pike. But anyway, I got two. No, that's a big walleye, dude. Ooh, wow. Look at that walleye. You want to talk about a big walleye. <laughs> now, I'm no walleye fisherman. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, that is a good one. But I got two, two good bass bites so far. Caught a couple non-keepers, so there's some up there. But my goodness. 
some of my redneck buddies are going to be cussing me for throwing this thing back. <laughs> You'd like to eat that thing, wouldn't you, <laughs> Tommy? I'd love to. <laughs> But this, this like spot's all about inch. boat positioning. And <laughs> yesterday there was two guys here and I couldn't couldn't get positioned right. And the eddy changed because there's a lot more water flow through there today. I think there's going to be a lot of dobbing around the Alaska spillway uh, for pike and, and bass not and only, walleye. Not only his southern friends were upset that he let that go, but pretty much ever, anybody that eats walleye is upset he let that fish go. Drew Benton, what did I say about nobody able to run away and hide from anyone and put up a big number? Absolutely, that's what Drew Benton has done so far. Catching out a three-pound lead over Scott Martin. Scott Martin on the board as well. We will be checking that out and all the other stories we're following as we just get started with semifinal Sunday. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. Julio Rodriguez leads the Mariners as they take on Jose Ramirez and the Guardians, or Carlos Correa and the Twins battle Jose Abreu and the White Sox in a fiery AL Central showdown Saturday, 7 Eastern on Fox. Hey. Check local listings for the game in your area. Those White Sox. Mm -hmm. Unlike the Bears, Tommy Sanders, the like undefeated you. again Bears. Justin Fields passed for 37 touchdowns. Impressive. Last. That was very impressive. impressive. Yeah, that was Gonna get just, down what a machine. To the bottom end um, of pool A for the Scott Martin, who has been off to a quick start every day of this tournament so far, made the comment, I am definitely on the fish to win this tournament. There he is. Good one. That's a good one. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Number one. All right. That felt good. That felt real good. Jig's been good to me. Been key fish every morning, typical Mississippi River, especially especially around La Crosse. Swim jig early. Little sandbar with a lot of rubble on it where Scott Martin thought it was gonna be his smallmouth spot on days one and two. Not the case. Loading up with largemouth every morning so far. Scott Martin for a minute here. Check in on Matt Airy. What a great tournament for Matt. Oh, Very consistent. Is it a bunch week. of little ones up there? Swim jig and a chatter bait for Airy. Every That's a good one. Start. That's a keeper. There we go. That's more like it here. That's better. That's, God, they're eating it funny, man. Eating it funny. Number one now. Eating it real funny. I don't want them to act all funny. They're biting. We got to get back in there. A bunch of them up there. That's kind of one of the little sweet spots there. There's a big clean spot right there in the grass. And it's right here between these jetties where there's current coming through and it gives them a great place in between all that grass to set up early and feed. There's a bunch of them up there, it seems like. I mean, I'm getting two or three bites every cast. Well, there's probably multiple fish there. Probably. Our newly yeah. crowned uh, Rookie of the Year, Jay Shakurik, is not done. He's got two fish. He's jumped to fourth place. Yes. Kind of watch these guys, how they rotate through baits to start. A lot of power fishing, whether it's swim jigs or bladed jigs on these little sandbars or depressions. And then they'll slow down after the aggressive bite in the morning. 
Oh, you could not ask for better weather right he's a now keeper. for this to happen. Smallmouth. Maybe a keeper. They're up there. They're up there. Which feels good. Catch them. I think it's a keeper. Yep. 14 inches. We'll need to get rid of him. We'll put him over on this side. That's two. So these little sandbars and depressions, they're shallow. I mean, they're one to four feet of water, but one of the common themes is clear areas around a lot of the eelgrass on the bottom of Pool 8. Sand mixed with some sort of little rock. We saw that with Shakurit, Chris Johnston, Scott Martin, and Matt Airy. Good one. Good one. Stay pinned, baby. Stay pinned. I knew that worm would do it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Number two. Good, solid, solid fish. Solid fish. They get to biting. They get to biting that bladed jig real funny. Just, I mean, I'd get two or three bites every cast, and I change colors, and I caught one, but I can tell these fish, they want, they're gonna want this worm, I think. I think. They've seen that bladed jig a lot, too much, really. Yeah, need five of those. Brian New, solid tournament so far, right around the corner from that area. And it kind of seems that area down near Stoddard, obviously heavily pressured. A lot of our guys in the top 10 fishing that area, but they all kind of have their own isolated, whoa, wow. <laughs> isolated schools. We need the slow motion that looks at. Not gonna zero. Decent one. Thank you, Lord. Let's catch four more of them real quick. Come sit over here. He's got me fourteen, ain't he? News moving right now, kind of a little bit of a hot mess. Fishing a swim jig, but when you get these little, little areas, these clean areas, there's dozens, dozens of bass keeping that school fired. Yeah, come sit beside me.
lot of times the places we go, the schools of fish load up by size, where they're all two pounders, they're all three pounders, they're all four pounders. Here it seems they mix a they're lot, mixed they a lot in size, so that's a good you can kind of catch, you have to catch one. as many because you don't know, you know, when the next Let four pounders coming. Let me get a couple casts real quick. <sighs> Brian New inviting another angler. I'd... Just like maybe throw to the left of me or something for a minute. Yeah. If I get two more of them, I'll make the top 10. Like uh, two of them, recent, I think. think. Pull down right there, yeah. All of these guys, Scott Martin, Matt Airy, Brian New, making the exact same cast over and over. As an angler, you start to feel real good about it. Every single fish that keeps biting, you just... Yellow's well, got to go. You notice he invited Austin Felix in. That is who it is, you're right. He invited him in, that's his roommate, but also said, hey, let hey, me catch a few yeah, more yeah, before yeah, you get apple yeah. pie from me. Make <laughs> sure I make the final day before you come get some. Yeah, there was a stipulation in there. Which it works out. You know, it they both made the top good. 10 last week in South Dakota. Now Austin Felix, the champion, more. helped out new, be able to do that. Had to repay in the favor yeah. this week. You get you something in a minute. Fast and furious, the best anglers in the business getting dialed in and just wrecking them in the first 30 minutes here. 10 pounds in the boat for Scott Martin, for Brian New. So much fun to watch here. Setting the tone for a great day of fishing. Man, oh man, what lies ahead of us today? That and many, many intriguing stories on the way here on semifinal Sunday at La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, just finished day with day two. I got the lead by about an ounce, but it's anyone's game. And then uh, the surprising bait for me today actually was the Spro Secura Nedrig bait. Um, I really wasn't planning on catching them on this thing. And uh, every day I get a couple, couple bites quick on a chatter bait or my bladed jig, and uh, and then it would be dead. Gonna do the same thing tomorrow. Hopefully those smallmouth. Uh, I left a few there, or, or it reloads. Try and get a couple kickers, and we'll see what happens. Bass Pro Shop's top lures. Chris Johnston right there started the day with the lead, the smallest possible lead you can have of one ounce, yet he the most consistent over two days among our anglers, 16-4 on day number one, 15-10 on day two. The first look at Chris today. And really of all of our anglers in the top 10, he has made that smallmouth deal work throughout this tournament so far, making big upgrades late in the day with a frog and largemouth fishing. But definitely the most consistent mornings for smallmouth. That was really weird. Must have swam right at me. Come on, baby. Buried right in the weeds. They're definitely not giants. Yeah, that is not the size that he started with yesterday morning.
Not very big. He might keep though. They are going everywhere. We got one. We got one. Okay, okay, okay. That was a big one. Watch this. I'll deal with him later. I'll weigh him later. They're schooling everywhere around the boat. Like, They're really biting this morning, Tommy Sanders. <laughs> They're really biting. I think you're right. Three. Oh my word. Still a pretty decent one. A lot of what the event has caught late in the day has come typical frog fishing here in pool eight. These fish are all bonus where you don't need to get five bites in the heavy cover. Be a keeper. He feels good. Oh, he's in grass. Come out of there. He came out. I don't know what he is. I ain't seen him yet. He's a keeper, I think. Yeah, he's a keeper. <sighs> Not a big one, but a keeper. Stink. Now that's that was built right. Yeah, that was built right. Chunky, pretty little Mississippi River bass. That's what's so great about these places. Short and fat. They weigh a lot more than you think they do. Let's get back in there. Can't we catch about 16 pounds here real quick? We'll go eat us a sandwich. That area's quietly had a great season this year. The There's a bunch of them up there today, which is a good thing for us. Handful of top 20s. I don't want to worm them already. Sometimes you gotta come in from the front, sometimes you gotta come in from the back. No oh boy. We got a limit. Coal tag hole in his mouth. Look at that right there. All right, you can start doing it, casting. I want to oh, catch man. another good one or two or three. said at the top of the show they are biting early and often here on the Mississippi River in pool number eight and that was the case this morning Brian knew it fair to say just an absolute train wreck hot mess out there getting it done crazy hook sets crazy fit Tommy five hits five bass limit in under 12 minutes and it's not like this whole area is good. We talked about that where Drew Benton is fishing. A lot of anglers are watching this footage right now that did not make the cut. Very, very small, one cast sweet spots, holes, little depressions in that eel grass down there. 
making the same cast over and over for Brian New. Slipped up a little bit yesterday like Brian Schmidt. Good one right there for Brian New. The power pole replay of the day. A massive flurry for Brian New. Two good tournaments in a row, threatening to be in our championship Monday. Brian New, a lot of heat at the end of the season here, finishing in style. Went to eighth place at Oahe last week. And that was not an easy thing to do. And man, oh man, he is dialed in here for sure. Because of a good finish so far this week through half the tournament, he's in the top 20 in our Angler of the Year race, which means he gets that top 20 he bonus check as well. Is. I don't think he would. I don't think he'd do that. Here's a guy that top 10 might not want to see on championship Monday. Seth Fighter from 22nd place. He's got his limit early today. He's up to fifth place. A second place finish here in 2016. <clears throat> I'm like blew up on it when it hit the surface. I don't even know if he got key. We got to see a soft plastic jerk bait play in a big way late yesterday with Brock Mosley. Never got to see Brandon Polinick do that. Still no, no catches from Brandon Lester. No, nope. it's kind of a flip flop of days Absolutely. between Polinick and Lester so far. Brandon Polinick way ahead of his schedule from yesterday, which was a struggle the first half of that day, to say the least. In search of his second progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title, Scott Martin in pursuit of a win here for sure. His big start, he has done well each and every day here. Brian New also dialed in completely. We should cure it on the leaderboard as well. We're going to be checking in with him, our newly crowned Rookie of the Year, and much more to come. All right, guys, we just wrapped up day two here at La Crosse, Wisconsin. And I got to tell you what, I've been throwing a frog, getting most of my bites on topwater frog, but today, They've been short striking it a lot. We had lightning and thunder this morning, which anytime you're throwing a top water, you have some type of significant weather like that. It affects those top water fish. They don't stay committed to that frog. And I had two fish today come up and miss the frog and I couldn't get them to eat it again. Took my max scent creature hog, pitched it into the mat and I had to sit there and wait. But you know, it's a 50-50 chance on whether those fish are gonna come back and get it. And those were two keepers that I weighed in. So for me to weigh 1311, sitting in 14th place was a big, big deal to maximize those bites. I only had seven keeper bites today. Getting two of them on the max scent uh, definitely helped out a lot. Hunter Shrike with our Berkeley right bait. Right oh my God. Oh, wow. That's right. Oh I've God. seen it once a million times here on Grieve Pool 8. Season. That is Grieve well, season, but they're, they're actually, not resident. Yeah. They actually well, just passed through, but oh, they have water. a time together White this pelican. time of year. Two Look kinds of pelicans in the That's world. a long beaked Grieve, Tommy. It's it is not a white, pelican. The white bird, they're browns and white. You see a lot of those in Stuttgart, Arkansas, don't we, Tommy? I'm not telling you what we're going to do. We're going to take and slink away from those Grieves, making their move here on Pool 8. Going to get back out to Brandon Polinick, who's so far ahead of where he was at yesterday at this time. That was so cool. It's a better one. Stay on there. Yeah! Yeah! Mmm! Mm-hmm! That's a solid one right there. We need a limit of those right there. Limit of those is AOI.
you see him? It's crazy. If you don't have it rigged right where it pops the surface, they won't bite it. If it starts getting worn out and it, it wants to dive, they don't touch it. It's got to hit the surface. I mean, that, huh? Uh, let's give him two and three quarter, I guess, maybe. I don't know if he's quite three. I'll know when I weigh him. I'm just gonna catch him right now. That's a good one there. Stay on, baby. He ain't that big, but he's a keeper. Come in here. Yes, sir. I only got number one. Nice two and a half pounder. We'll get us started. Seriously. There he is. There he is. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Whew. Almost with my finger, dude. Sure he's 14. Just gotta check. Make sure. Oh yeah. It's my limit. We gotta get rid of that little that little guy over here. Alright? Got my limit? Two over there. Is that four? Huh? Five. One, two. Three, four, five. Alright, cool. Got a limit. Got a limit, boys! Scott Martin stretching out his lead right there. What a day for him. What a tournament for him. Been a man on a mission this week. Uh, we're always uh, uh, happy to see this man who's always been on a mission to keep us informed of what's going on. The great Davey High two-time Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Lots of developments today. Kind of a mirror image uh, uh, opposites for yesterday as far as Lester and Polinick Davey. And, but the rest of these guys, wow, they are putting on a show. Did you foresee this day being as strong as it's been so far? Yeah, yeah, Tommy. I mean, the, war, the weather is perfect, especially for the largemouth. I mean, just a, a light drizzle of rain, you know, not much wind at all, and just a perfect day. I've been watching, you know, these anglers catching them a lot faster than most of them did yesterday. And hopefully Brandon Polnick will have a little quicker day uh, than he did yesterday. Man, AOI on the line here today, possibly, if not today, tomorrow. But Brandon Polnick, man, he had a, had a tough day yesterday. That last fish he caught, his fifth fish, with only 30 minutes to go with a 4.30 check-in time, was huge for Brandon Polnick. No doubt about it. He was stressed out all day long. Davey Hike, if you can, for some of the viewers here on FS1, we see a lot of deep water schools throughout the season. We have seen them throughout this season on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Kind of walk our viewers through, this is a different scenario. A lot of these large mouth, a lot of these small mouth are in one to four feet of water, and there's not four or five of them. There are dozens of fish on top of each other. Kind of paint the picture what it looks like under the water. So, so Z is very similar to when we see the, you know, let's say Tennessee River, Coosa River, just name the river systems that, that we see anglers fishing offshore, but everything just happens a lot shallower. 
it's 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 all about current it's all about some kind of cover and structure uh, and they just do it a lot shallower here these fish this time of year up north tend to live shallow the large mouth and the small mouth and it's just really incredible this river the upper part of the mississippi river is loaded with bait fish in those shallow water areas you have a lot of the beautiful vegetation you can see see here so these fish have every reason in the world to be shallow but there again it's still the same thing you're looking for you're looking for current a current break or maybe a little stronger current depending Depending on especially smallmouth like that, a little more current than the largemouth, but it's usually some kind of cover and current there where those fish are that's really just pushing bait fish by them. Davey, thank you so much. Staying on top of it, the great Davey Height with us today. Him and Dave Mercer will be taking over our coverage here before too much time passes here. We look forward to that on location coverage as well. Let's get back down to the man who's making the play for his second progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Brandon Paul. Yeah, Paul and Nick made the comment after the day two weigh, and I feel like I got I got the tough day out of the way. I hey, really it was tough yesterday. Hoping and praying that day three goes a lot smoother. Definitely the case early this morning for pollen. That's a good one. No, he's not that big. He's just way out there. Come on, more bigs. I wish they'd blow up again so I could just like pick out the big ones. Somewhere. That'll work. Oh, old Zoom speed crawl, baby. Speed worm, baby. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Five alt gamagatsu round bin up in that face. And a large sized bass. That's a nice one. Brian New slipping off the pace a little bit on day two, rebounding here. And the one thing to kind of watch is Chris Johnston in his first 60 minutes, your leader coming into today, slipping off the pace. And he said, look, if they don't reload for me, I'm going to have a slow, grimy day. So far, that is the case for your leader coming into today, Chris Johnston. Yeah, on average, our anglers have been fishing for one hour, and what an hour it has been. We have a brand new look to the top of our leaderboard, among other things. Uh, Brandon Polinick, his day is looking much different than it did yesterday, so we are seeing changes happening right now, and the best thing is they are catching them. Some guys are so dialed in, you just... You just can't take your eyes off what's going on right here. We are going to take our eyes off for a quick break, and we will be right back. Hi there. I'm Fox Weather's Amy Freeze, and this is the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite Series forecast. It looks like a challenging day for anglers. Rough weather is expected in La Crosse, Wisconsin on the Mississippi River. We're expecting morning showers with a rumble of thunder. It's gonna be muggy all day, a high of just 79 degrees. Plus, we're expecting gusty winds as well. So pros, you're gonna to have to pull out all the stops today. Remember, you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Thank you, Amy Freeze from yeah. the Fox Weather yeah. Center, keeping us on our toes. Not only has she been on point this tournament, uh, Ronnie, I'm going to. She has been on all point all year long. Season 100%. Yeah. She has been fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Yesterday was a tough we a day for weather and sports. The the tour oh, championship yeah. for the PGA, two big weather delays. The the, the race didn't take place at Daytona. It but it tough. And we I'm not a Cam Howard Smith fan anymore. But, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just not uh, a Cam Smith fan. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. We can trench into that a yeah, little okay. bit later. Yeah, maybe he can have fun yeah. living at live. Oh, no. Yeah. Flashback day. Brandon Polinick getting it done. A lot easier situation in Polinick's boat right now. Looking to lock up his second Fast Master Elite Series Angler of the Year title. Well on his way this morning. And if we remember fondly of his 2017 Angler of the Year run, it was also dramatic up until the final day when he filled his limit at Mille Lacs to knock that out. Get in there. Recall, recall last year, even Seth Fighter, who blew away the field in AOI, had a rough start on his fi final tournament. He was Pounding three really iffy and missing away. fish on that uh, first day, I believe. Yeah, and then he finished towards the tournament. Yeah, 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 for about an hour. Yeah. A lot yes. easier situation the second day for oh. Seth Fighter. Oh, yeah. Than it was for <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. We got a long day ahead of us. Wiped it. Come back and get it. Oh. There's one. May oh. I don't know. Don't know. Don't think he's gonna help. Maybe get rid of that little smallmouth if he's a keeper, because he's kind of fat. Scott Martin's looking to post oh, yeah. his best Elite Series finish. He was Teth Clinton Harris chain. This is his second sure year. Get rid of that little smallmouth on the elites. For the win now, for these he tied up. Get rid of that little small mouth. A classic bird. All right. Upgrade. Officially a limit. Officially. Oh. I don't know mm. if that's a bass. That was pretty if it was. I think it is. Yes. It's over. It I think it's. Yeah. I was kind. Of, this is terrible. I was kind of hoping he might just struggle, just struggle for an hour give, or give two. Give us a little bit of that yesterday's struggle. Come on. Uh, no, no, no. Good for him. Back in the top D ten. Davey nailed it, man. His day no, yesterday. No, that no, last no. two hours catching one more keeper to get him into today. Yesterday. Every day is so critical on the Elite Series. Yesterday was the most critical day of his season, by far. It's incredible that it comes down to that because he's had two events this year where he's had 98 or more pounds in a four-day tournament. Right. Heavyweight, big tournaments, and uh, it came down to a pound and a quarter fish to get him into today that ends up being the it's fish that's big important. deal, man. Looking for his first one. Looks like it there. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. That's a, that's a good fish. Pound and a half. Camera with Keith Combs. Not sure of his location right now, but.
but it's been a little bit of sketchy service down in pool nine. I think it'll call. And Gerald Swindle, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I got two. Uh-oh. I got two. Yep. I got two. Oh, wow. <laughs> one will call, one won't. Stormarashi top walker. It's not bad. No wonder he looks so big. Power pole replay of the day of the year. Tommy. Mm -hmm. He's a lot calmer today, too. It's a different vibe. It is. <laughs> yep. Pretty sure the yellow is smaller than. I'm pretty sure he's smaller. I need to make that, like, I've done this before. I'm gonna make sure there's five in there still. Doesn't feel big. The biggest one of the day, though. Take them. We'll take that. First decent one. You surprised that spot right there for Chris Johnston hasn't reloaded a today? A bit. Yeah, I mean, he left them oh, he, biting he that size and bigger yesterday morning. One. Number three. Reach you, buddy. What is happening today? <laughs> Just great. It's so different. <laughs> Could Brandon Pollock make the final day cut today? <laughs> That's well now. Probably a little bit out of reach, well, but well, it's it's the way our tone has right. been. Should. Will he survive? Oh man, he can't do anything wrong. This is why I wanted to weigh them. So I didn't have to do this. Yeah, now they're all getting, they're all getting close. Well, he's about six hours earlier than he was yesterday. Yeah, at, at this seven point. Yeah, hours. his weight's yes. probably better than it was yesterday to, to combine. Aye, aye, aye. BMC on point by far and away. Brandon Polinick looking to seal the deal for his second Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year title starting in a different spot than we have seen him start the last two days of this tournament. Obviously, yesterday for the first four hours, every spot he went to was high and dry. Not the case today. Switching over to a soft plastic jerk bait, a big top water bait. Fair to say, Brandon Polinick is your unofficial. Yeah, unofficial. 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 You never know what can it. happen. Gotta say it. Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year, an unbelievable performance today compared yeah. to a slow, look at that right there, two on one cast, living right, Brandon Polinick, BMC on point. We'll be right back. Sometimes <laughs> two at once. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. 
just an hour and a half into our eight-hour fishing day for these 47 anglers who have qualified for semi-final Sunday here at the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite on this incredible place, the Upper Mississippi River Pool 7, 8, and 9. This is the way it stands right now, and as we say, we have a new look to our leaderboard from what we started out with today. Brian New on top mm -hmm. right now. Brian New has been turning on the, the afterburners these last two events of the year. Yeah, it was definitely slow yesterday morning for Brian New, the Mercury move of the day. You wondered, we talked about this at the top of the show, which one of these anglers in the top 10 one of their spots was going to reload with that better than average size bass. Really, you get past about two and a half pounds here, you have definitely done something. You look at guys like Scott Martin, Drew Benton, Matt Airy, Brian Schmidt, your day one leader. Well, this morning on semifinal Sunday, Brian New, very, very consistent, sharing that spot with his roommate, Austin Felix, who won the tournament on a Wahe last week, anchoring his day at 8.06 with a 3.12 Mercury move of the day. Brian New, just around the corner, somebody having another good morning, quietly, kind of away from the pack. A lot of the pressure going on down there in Stoddard. Going to get on the water right now with Matt Airy. Tommy, that all new SmackDown. Are you a big Roman Reigns fan? Uh huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he looks more like a CM Punk guy. <laughs> all right. I give. Yeah, baby. Stay still. That's a good one. That's number four. Is it fair to say that you're yeah. still trapped in the Kamala, the Ugandan headhunter? Cowboy Bill uh, Watts. I, the Islanders. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Absolutely. Haku and Tama. On this yeah. cast too. Dory Funk Jr. <laughs> Stop it. It's the last turn of it. Doesn't matter. We got him fired up now. The little one now. We'll get him out of there quick so he didn't. All right. They're set back up, what I was saying. Brandon Lester keeping our eye on him today. Well, he has slipped off the pace that he was on the first two days of this tournament. He was easily culling by now with this little spot. Definitely has been well, his limit area every morning. And you wonder uh, if needing to have a good day, wanting to try something a little different, that first hour, 90 minutes is so that. important. You start in a different area. Now you may may have missed that flurry window, and now your day is kind of just, you know, hodgepodge. It's hard to say because you looked at, you know, Polinick changing his rotation and it working, and but you're right, losing boy, losing that first hour of daylight. On, on this region, critical. Yeah. Thank you, Loki. Oh yeah, number two. Again, we do need to highlight, we do have cameras with Gerald Swindle and Keith Combs fishing down in pool nine. Just not a lot of service, but we'll try to report. Oh, one bit it again. What they've caught so far. Swindle just under 10 pounds. That one might be close. 
Might be close. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Number four. If people do not know that are tuning in, this spillway that, uh, that Drew Benton is fishing at, this is kind of one of the barriers that separates Pool 7 from Pool 8. This is the spillway from Lake Onalaska that yeah. naturally yeah, flows over. You have to go around the islands to the to the west to, to the be able to lock yes. through to get like three, bites on three, cats three right different here. pools in play this week. And a two -pounder. he is in Pool 8, which is our takeoff pool. Last fish put Matt Airy second place, five ounces back of Brian New. to the cast yet, but Kyle, get ready. Mm. Yes! Mm. I don't even know which one to call right now. Hold on. We're just gonna weigh them all right now. Yeah, I've been saving this I've been saving this. Like we just haven't made it out here, but I was like, that's the cast right there. Bold. Down to Chris Johnston. Come on, be a good one. Two small fish in the live well. Wondering if this might be a drum. The way it hit it. Nope. Best one of the day so far. I better not boat flip. <laughs> Big. It's a cute little guy. It's amazing that is a fish that he would shun. Oh God. Lake Ontario. <laughs> totally get Yes, they're way. all about that size here. Disregard. This one's not looking so good. I think I'm gonna call him. Smallest one, but we're a little better fish for Chris Johnston right there. You can see the conditions here have really sort of played into most of our anglers' hands. Everybody prospers at the same level mm. all day long. Our TH Marine Weather Watch currently right now 71 degrees, room temperature, light rain, a light wind as well from the south southeast. This is semi-final Sunday. Tomorrow we look forward to Championship Monday with uh, warmer temperatures. Mostly cloudy, not as much rain possibly in the area. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll wrap up our season tomorrow. Hope you can check it out. And a great day today, a great week here at one of the great spots for fishing in all the world, across Wisconsin and the upper Mississippi. And we'll be right back. The guaranteed Ray Bassmaster Elite at the Mississippi River is sponsored by Lynn Coda. Power pole. Skeeter boats. And by Rapala. 
47 anglers who've been through it all for the last seven months have achieved uh, something important to make that last cut at the last event for the 47 who fish here on semi-final Sunday. They're all looking for extra points, everything to sort of add, put the finishing touches on a season. The man who is putting the finishing touches I'd on say. an amazing season right now. We're looking at Brandon Polinick. Look at that. He looked bigger out there. Can't fight with your mouth full. I should call a two-pounder. <laughs> Look how skinny he is. No wonder I thought he was a giant. I mean, that's like a three and a half pound frame. The head on that thing. Golly. I don't even know what I did with my skin. I was a good boy and put it right back where it's supposed to be. Yeah, I'll get rid of a two pounder. It's a two and a half pounder on a massive frame. how long that fish is. He's just skinny. They're long and skinny. That could have been a three and a half pounder if he was full. That's a big one. That's a freaking giant, dude. That's mad air. That's a giant. I hope it's a bass. Oh, it's a bass. It's a big one, too. God. Yeah, baby. Meat. Mm. Good one right there for Matt Airy. It'll be close to four. And four pounders at this body of water are like sevens elsewhere. Uh oh, I'm right. going in the big side. Oh, no. Damn. That is not good for Scott Martin, especially when they are biting, losing time. Time to do some color. Never a bad thing. Don't quite have info on what's going on with Scott Martin. I know it ain't this one. It could be that one. No. There's one. That one's not here. I know it's this one. 100% that one. We're going to check him anyway just to make sure. Harry with that one's going to probably move against so the head of the guy on your right. And I said, oh, that's a good one. That's what we're looking for. Drew Benton. Yeah, Drew a couple Benton. more of them. We'll make a big run at this guy. All right. Number five. I saw that fish come up and eat it. Long, skinny one. That fish gave Matt Airy the lead with 43 pounds, 13 ounces. Nine ounces ahead of Brian New. What it does look like, though, for Scott Martin is he didn't have to come back to the ramp in lacrosse. He was able to do it in Stoddard, which is where he's fishing, so a lot less time lost running back or trying to manage his way back.
again to start the day. Fantastic tournament here. A lot of experience, a lot of knowledge of this place. And oh, yeah. Good all around at this style of fishing. The one and only former two time hey. progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, First Gerald Swindle. Time that we've been down to Pool 9 here. I know you got to talk to Gerald Swindle, Ronnie. Flying south on the we yep. you, even though we were going up there, we we're flying down this body of water to Pool 9, like you mentioned, and Gerald Swindle. It's got a unique area. We'll see if we hear from him a little bit. And Ronnie, I'm gonna hand this one off to you. I know you talked to Swindle. Go yeah. ahead, Mike. Well, I mean, honestly, Swindle's quick start this morning, when you are locking through and you make that decision to leave one body of water and get to another, there's a lot of risks involved, but the rewards can be fishing by yourself. And for Gerald Swindle this week, that is one thing he said was a benefit. I could fish in Stoddard around a bunch of other anglers and split up fish, or I could go down here and he's found a key spot in pool nine where he got right in a hurry. In about a 10 minute or so window, like we saw with Brian New, he landed his limit this morning. We're seeing great visuals of that. A cool area, a protected bay. You see that watercolor, it's very good, very clear watercolor compared to a lot of other areas in this region that got dirty with all of this rain and the storms that have pushed through. This area has remained protected. It's an area that has milfoil, some coontail, two different types of grass. It has that hard edge there with the riprap bank. A lot of different eelgrass also mixed in between. It's a place that these fish can get in. It filters the water very well, and he's been able to use a chatterbait, a little bit of a crankbait, and also a frog. He said that this morning, if he had, if he got there and had it to himself like he does, he could get right in a hurry. A quick 10-pound limit for him. That could almost keep him in the top 10, but the ability to cull later in the day, that is what he's excited about. He knew he'd catch numbers. The size comes later for him. Well, we got to see flurries all morning long so far. Marathon peak performance happened in a flash for Gerald Swindle. As you said, Ronnie Moore getting away from the crowd. Going to see if that pays big dividends for Swindle and Keith Combs, both down in pool nine. If you hear that loud noise in the background, that is the train tracks. That is that hard riprap edge. It is well, a train track. Uh, Trains are running here. You know, it's been it's uh, been pretty good morning. I pulled in on the key area. I got I got a sandbar break with some hydro, a little mill pool scattered all out on it. Took a three eighths ounce jackhammer chatterbait. I caught several, probably 15 or 20 fish, real quick. I got somewhere between I don't know 10 or 12 pounds. It's what I needed to base. Now I'm just going to kind of ease around this whole area. It's got scattered mill foil what comes off on the break. And I've been able to pick up a few on a chatterbait. It's a perfect day for it. Give it a sun. Let's see if we're going to get any light in the day and then start frogging. But one thing we got today is we got a barge coming. So we know we could have trouble. We might have to go back early. So I mean, I might have to go back as early as 11 o'clock. So going to be interesting, but right now we got a base weight caught. I need to get a couple of key, key bites to get to that 14 to 15 pound mark. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. Gerald Swindle, good job of uh, outlaying his entire situation right now, including his timetable, which is kind of critical. Done good work, though. He's gotten that limit fast. We've got plenty more on the way. Let's take a look right now at our Jack Link's Hook the Beast, and the man is Drew Benton. Hook the Beast. Another one. That's a tank for here, this week. Whoa! Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Everything's about a goal, right? And, and, and I'm hoping I can achieve the goals that I've set forward here on the elites. They're, they're, they're stiff goals, they're, they're tough goals. I mean, uh, to win an elite event is not easy. To win an Angler of the Year is extremely hard. Uh, and then to possibly win the Bassmasters Classic is the ultimate. 
You know, there's been a lot of people that have fished the Bassmasters Classic over the years, but very few have won it, very few. And, uh, and that's my goal. Scott Martin certainly a driven guy this week on a, on a mission, uh, initially to make it into the Classic, uh, to qualify for the Classic, get inside that sort of moving cut line that we, we think is the number. That area, though, the guy on top right now just caught a really, really nice one. Brian New having a fantastic day out there as well. Yeah, one thing to really watch, your Rookie of the Year crowned yesterday. Jay Shakurit in the top five right now unofficially. We said after day one of competition, do not count him out, possibly holding yet another trophy this year. Brandon Polinick also having moved up into the top ten. Not surprising what he has shown us today has been phenomenal. Keeping with his season. Let's get out to the guy who's closest pursuer for the last couple of weeks, Brandon Lester. By far the slowest morning for Brandon Lester. Close. Like 13 and a half. Nope, he's a keeper. A line burner, but a keeper. Number three. It's not easy this morning. One thing about it, I've hit enough spots at this point. I can I can just tell they're not real enthused about mine. And if it's tough for me, it's tough for everybody, I promise you. Another keeper for Brandon Lester, his third of the morning. But like you said, Z, it's been a slow morning as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. And that is the point of topic today, is the Angler of the Year race. Progressive Angler of the Year wraps up today or tomorrow, depending on how the finishes go. But I'm going to go through a couple of the situations that these anglers who are fighting for it, Brandon Polinick and Brandon Lester, what they have to do today if they want to secure that title. And so as we look at it, the magic number, we hear that term often in baseball when it comes to making the playoffs, how many wins do they need the rest of the year to lock up a deal. Well, for Brandon Polinick to lock up Progressive Angler of the Year and another $100,000 payday today, 38th place. That is where Brandon Polinick needs to finish today, where no one else, it doesn't matter how anyone else does, they could finish first, second, third in the, in the standings today and this week, and it would not matter. 38th place gets Brandon Polinick his second Bassmaster Angler of the Year award. But if for some reason, even though he's had a really strong start to the morning, if he does not get to that top 38 spot, Brandon Lester would have an opportunity. He has to make the top 10, though, no matter what. Even if Brandon Polinick falls down to 47th, which is our last spot in the cut today, Brandon Lester has to make the top 10, has to finish in ninth place or better this week to beat out all the tiebreakers and to be a one-time, his first-time Angler of the Year winner. But when we think about some guys who really saved their tournament here, we think about a couple Midwest guys. I brought it up yesterday at the end of our show. A couple disappointments. Guys who are Minnesota, Wisconsin anglers that have fished the Mississippi River quite a bit. Guys that we expected to factor in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. And after day one, they were in 64th and 65th place, way below the cut line, way under par from what they expected this week. But huge bags, over 15 pounds for Bob Downey and over 16 pounds for Seth Fighter yesterday. They moved up 33 and 42 spots respectively. They were guys who were picked quite highly in fantasy fishing and it had a lot of teams on the outside looking in if they wanted to win the end of the year grand prize, which is a fishing trip with none other than Mark Zona and Davey Height, two of our commentators on our crew. And also wanted to give some love we just did in our standings, but Jay Shakurit knocking out Rookie of the Year yesterday. Normally we wait till Rookie of the Year after Angler of the Year because it's a much tighter race, but Jay with a 13th place finish last week at Lake Oahe, a great start to his year overall a victory at the St. Lawrence River as well this season and 13th place going into day three this week. He wrapped it up over a 90 point lead over a Cody Huff who is also fishing today who has also had a fantastic season and is fishing in the Bassmaster Classic next year. So those are the AOI races. It's all Brandon Polinick and with his strong start this morning we can all but say he has secured his second Bassmaster Angler of the Year trophy. Well done Ronnie Moore. That was, that was yeah comprehensive awards recognition right Trenched there. Trenched right sure. in there.
to get out to Keith Combs. I, I was mentioning to you guys, our, our pal Pete Robbins pointed out something about uh, two of our anglers who started the day in the top ten uh, today. The only remaining two anglers from the rookie class of 2011. Wow. Brandon Polinick and Keith Combs. Pete Robinson. Not too shabby sweet, of a duo either. trivia there. Oh, it is good to see Keith Combs back in the mix. He talked about it before we went live today. An unusually slow two years for Keith Combs, especially mm -hmm. with some of the bodies of water the top that we've water today. To. Two consecutive fights on the Carolina rig. Again, he needs to win this oh, tournament. Qualify for the classic. Little baby one, but the problem with a smallmouth, um, a lot of them, that's a big fish. You know, it's long, but he's real skinny. He doesn't weigh very much. That's not the, you know, that's not always the case with them, but a lot of them right now are very skinny. And I caught my biggest bass of the first day here. And it was about a three, three and a half pounder, and it was a thick smallmouth, good looking fish. We might be on to something. Please be bass. Well, it has been a catch fest. <laughs> you could not ask for Davy Height nail. You could not ask for better weather. Light winds. Huh? Too easy. There's so many there, dude. Z, you said it was the best weather. For people watching online that maybe don't, they're not avid tournament anglers, this does not look like the best weather. Oof, this is fishing But weather. it is fishing. This it is, is fishing the low pressure, that's the one yeah. deal. And kind of watch one of the things we talked about at the top of the show. A lot of these guys get to these one cast areas, whether it's a hole in the grass, a depression, whatever, a sandbar. Yeah, gosh, look at that. He's just like compared to the largemouth. Every one of them will power Maybe fish nothing. it for the first hour, bladed there's, there's jig, a, a swim here. jig, a top water bait, whatever it is, a lot of moving baits. And then after they'll go through that rotation, that's when they'll slow down. That's we've, we've thought, seen a lot of speed worms, uh, a lot of wacky rigs, Ned yeah, rigs. Good ending right here. He's running at me. See Combs so and Schmidt, both Carolina rigging. That's the main thing that you've seen throughout this tournament. We got him. When you find one, there could be a hundred there in some of these areas. That was the one concern with Brian Schmidt's area, though, in Stoddard. A lot of fish, but a lot of anglers splitting them up. And would it last four days? It's lasted two and a half so far for a lot of these anglers. Kind of broken away from that pack in Stoddard that was getting so much pressure. That's a little better one. That's a little better smallmouth. I don't know how many times in the last forever years that I fished, I've set my hook. It never gets old. I love that. Just lean into him and oh, that's a good one. Man, it's a long time coming this season for Keith Combs as well. Someone who has always been in our top 10 of the oh, angler year race. Absolutely. Just a suffering season for him, not, not too great of a year.
Oh, this is the big breakout right here. For Keith Combs, much beloved by bass fishing fans everywhere. Matt Airy, North Carolina angler on top of a South Carolina angler named Brian New. What a great look we've got to the top of that leaderboard. Tight as always. The margins are so thin here. The fishing is so good. An absolute, as you said, catch best mark Zona, and we have more on the way. That's the good news. Look at the size of that bass. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Semi-final Sunday here. We're down to 47 anglers at our last event of the season here at the Bassmaster Elite Series. 47 making their last stand. Ten of them will get to fish tomorrow. You bet ten are. We'll is yet to be established. That's the fun of it. That's what we're watching all day today. La Crosse, Wisconsin, Upper Mississippi River, just terrific, terrific fishing. Yeah, and we're going to have, seems like we're going to have probably another hour or two of rain before it starts to lighten up around the noontime hour. One of the first times that we've seen Brian Schmidt break away from that area that Brian knew, Matt Aries in. That's us. Brian Schmidt, third year in the Elite Series. On Lake Champlain back in 2021. Good start to his year this year. He is an interesting bird, too. Uh, he is. <laughs> interesting <laughs> dude. He, too, on a duff, in a different series, has a victory this year to start off the season, just like Brandon Lester. Both started off strong and had good, good first few events. We got to see him almost get a victory at the Harris Chain in the second event of the Elite Series season. Yeah, sixth place there. There's a couple situations here this week with the win and end. This tournament is different than every other Elite Series event because this finale, if you win it, you can make the Classic. Right now there's one angler in the top 10 who would be, who's basically fishing for himself. If he wins, it only helps him. That is Keith Combs. Everyone else would double qualify. Two fish over here and there's the green's gonna be our first to go. Small limit for Keith Combs and to note. Number five. Smallmouth is not what he caught down yeah, in bit like crazy pool right nine there. yesterday. It was all largemouth. Got a job done in about 90 minutes yesterday. And those two kind of have free reign of pool nine. There was about seven or eight anglers who have gone down to pool nine every day, but almost all of them, except for these two and, and Matt Heron, who has spent a little bit of time, those three are the only ones who get all the free reign of pool nine today. But like Swindle, he may have to come back early if that barge is going to block the lock. Two rookies of the year in our bottom two screens there. Drew Benton back seven years ago, Jay Shakura this year. Huh? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I can't hear you with this rain hoodie on. Um, a good, a good start. Good morning. Um, it's been real similar every day. Uh, it seems like there's a, a good early morning flurry. I've got a couple little places in the grass back there where they, they group up pretty good. And uh, we capitalize on all our bites. I mean, well, we, we missed a few bites, but we didn't lose any fish. Put them all in the boat. We've got a decent start to the day. If we can uh, come across one or two, you know, three and a half plus pounders, we'll be right there in the mix. So I'm a uh, feeling optimistic. Conditions are uh, not the most favorable and not the most fun to fish in, in the world, but uh, this is the Bassmaster Elites. You know, we don't get to pick the weather. We just go fishing when they tell us. 
We just need one or two big bites and we'll be right there. Well, big morning for Matt Airy, his spot reloading and Going to take a look right now at your Mercury Dare to Compare. Matt Airy and Brian New fishing close to each other. The area down in Stoddard, we were told, coming into this tournament by one of the best fishermen on this river system, Tom Monsoor. Look for that region, a pool eight to play. Well, and it is played in a big way. Lots of top 20s fishing in that area. Small irregularities, holes in that eel grass, depressions, little sand spots mixed with gravel. Looking at your Mercury Dare to Compare, both anglers anchoring their bags right now with one, and this is critical. You see that 312 for Brian New and Matt Airy. That is the size you need to make Championship Monday. The Mercury Dare to compare solid stringers. 14.7 for Brian New, 13.8 for Matt Airy. Your Mercury Dare to, I don't really know what we compared right there except for their stringer. Yeah, how good was, their stringers were. They're doing, yeah. they are. One thing also similar to these guys, they're both live and have grown up in the same region of the country right there the lake norman region of north carolina and brian new spent a lot of time in the back of matt airy's boat growing up as a co-angler learning traveling the tour with them yes and now competing against him i think brian new texted me the other day and said five of the top 10 he had fished with at a pro level event wow. as a co-angler when he was younger so you know, in that Mercury Dare to Compare, when we talk about the Stoddard region of Pool 8, that's a big area. Oh, yeah. It's a big area. And all of those guys that have risen up the leaderboard all have had a one-cast sweet spot. It's not like they put their trolling motor down and just meander through that flat. There's small irregularities, holes in that grass that has been the biggest key because there are... And you know this, Ron, there are plenty of anglers that are on their way home that did not make the cut, yeah. that fished there both the first two days of competition. God, I mean a giant pike right here just short line me. Big old giant, giant pike tried to eat it right at the trolling motor. Gerald kind Swindle said something <laughs> last night on the phone that kind of resonates to why people have maybe gone home even though they're in great areas is that sometimes on the Mississippi River everything looks fishy. There's so much grass, there's so much offshore grass, so much shoreline visible grass. You can do so many techniques. He said, I wanted to find an area with a good population of fish that I could just slow down and spend time in. A lot of the people who, who are not fishing today and have been cut have kind of probably sped through areas. They, a, they keep moving, they, they, don't, they don't just hunker down like Brian New power pulled down and be able to make a cast. So what you just said is exactly what Scott Martin from Florida said he treats this body of water exactly how I treat a Florida lake, which predominantly a Florida lake, if you speed up, you're gonna get in trouble. You have to yeah. slow down and literally pick every everything there. apart. So what you said is exactly what Scott Martin said all week long. The more I can slow down, the bigger my bag has been. Looking at a hummingbird bird's eye view, that little tributary coming in that Keith Cohn's concentrating on. Again, not where he caught them in Pool 9 yesterday. And one other aspect that other anglers have mentioned this week while in conversations with them is that as we get closer to the end of August, September, October, they, they do have a harsh winter up here. So these fish want to follow the bait fish, they want to feed up. So as soon as you get bait in an area and you catch one fish, there's going to be multiple there. There's no reason for them to leave if there's a good structure there and the bait is present. They're gonna stay in these regions for the next month and a half until it gets to be winter and there's snow and ice in the region it, that, that kind of lock them in for, this, for the winter. It, it's mind blowing to look at this hummingbird bird's eye view. It's mind blowing. Mississippi River, the Detroit River, St. Lawrence River, how many bass will get into a, I'm not talking a one acre stretch, I'm talking a quarter acre stretch in one to five feet of water to where you're like, there can there cannot be a hundred bass sitting there, and there absolutely is. You see that sandbar. Yep, sticks off like a point. 
absolutely concentrating on that little sandbar with soft current coming through it. That is a great hummingbird bird's eye view right there. It's one of the things Combs said. It's not a lot of currents, just soft current areas down in Pool 9. And there's not quite as much, there is, backwaters down in Pool 9, but not as much as Pool 8. And you can see by that bird's eye view there that the watercolor still, you can still see through it, it's still a good water clarity compared to a lot of areas in Pool 9 and the lower part of Pool 8 that have become chocolate milk where you can't even see. Just a foot down. Oh, it's a large mouth. I'll be dang. I'll be dang. He's gonna need you never to know here. Upgrade that size. <laughs> you never size. know what you're gonna catch. Well, that'd be a treat to catch a big one out here. Yeah, you know, round they are compared to that smallmouth. I mean, there. So the largemouth versus kind of the smallmouth structure. Not even close. Again, the goal today for all of these anglers, make it into the top 10. Yeah, the That's the mission they are on. Matt, Ari, and Brian New leading the way throughout this morning. The guys are getting on the right sizes, uh, are, are doing very, very well this morning. Keith Combs hanging in there quite well. We saw Drew Benton with a quick start, the quickest start of all today. And we got started, Jay Shakur, Brian Schmidt, maybe a little slower for him than it has been on the past two days. And Scott Martin trying to come back for a, a delay in his day. We'll be right back. Whoa! Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Semi-final Sunday here. We got 47 anglers on the Mississippi River. That's our fantastic host city, La Crosse, Wisconsin. What a great town. What a great fishing destination, especially this time of year. The weather may not look good to you, but it looks good to these anglers here, especially Matt Airy and Brian New. So, so many stories there. Look at Keith Combs, just a pound and a half out of totally salvaging his season with a, a win and you're in. We've got that working for you today. We got Brandon Polinick in the top 10. Really getting the hands on that progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title number two. Gerald Swindle, Scott Martin, much, much more. It's happening out there today. They're really catching. Oh, Scooter Boats, big fish alert. <laughs> Mike Iaconelli with a four pound, three ounce. He's in 13th place today with 13 pounds total. He's coming up from 41st place, trying to make that top 10. He'd be another winning end guy. Right. He is way down in the AOI standing. He'd be if scare the fire out of me. Let's <laughs> see what happened to Brandon Lester. Slow day so far for Brandon yeah, Lester. Very, very slow, much, of, much in contrast to yesterday and the day before that. Get it. Come on. God, he's all over it. There he is. That's a good one. Stay on, baby. Stay on. There's number four. Not a giant, but he is a thick one. <laughs> two pounder, two and a quarter. Maybe two and a half, he's fat. Let me get back in there, because they were fighting over my bait. There's a little bitty depression up there in a flat. That's what happens when you try to cast too hard. What a beautiful visual. That's the one thing, Tommy, when we saw this on the schedule, we knew no matter how good the fishing was or bad the fishing was, the visuals here of top water and the close-ups we'll see are just, you can't match it anywhere else. No, always the best.
Lester had fallen to 29th before that fish. It's him back up to 19th. a lot more easy going in Polinick's boat. Oh. Not a sense of urgency no. anymore. There was yesterday. There was. To put it in perspective, he checked in at 4.30 Central Time, 5.30 Eastern Time yesterday, caught his fifth keeper, 30 minutes left to go. Eesh. He already has a limit and has cold multiple times in the first hour and 15 minutes of the day. What a different mm. turn of events for him. Big old spotted up sucker. Oh, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. Okay. Yes, sir. Not as big as I thought, but it's a dang good one. Number five. <laughs> Look at them big old spots on that dude. He's pretty. Good one, two and three quarter. Puts him up over 10 pounds now and that two and a half, two and three quarter pounder right there for him. Maybe three pounder. Really look at Brandon Lester and Chris Johnston. Obviously, it appears right now that Brandon Polinick's going to win that angler of the year title. They did not give it to him this week. No. All right. In any way. This update with his three pounder should give him a limit, obviously, put him into the top 10. It is now Chris Johnston in ninth, Brandon wow. Lester in 10th, and Brandon Polinick in 11th. Our three a, guys, yeah. neck and neck, are all neck and neck in the stand. Amazing before. race, and we have not had one of those for a while. No, no, no. No, it's usually a different story. Yes. You just can't say enough about this place. What a great, great area Absolutely. to wrap up your season in. The upper Mississippi River, all this lush vegetation, all these good anglers, great anglers out there showing us how to do it. And what's weird is it is not the biggest bass that we've seen on oh, FS1 no, all from. year. But Doesn't matter. It's always one of the most dynamic tournaments of the entire season in the Bassmaster Elite Series. Plenty more to come on this special day. Greece. We're going to be the top 10. We'll fish there tomorrow. There they are. Oh, there they, there they go. We're going to go for a minute. When we come back, it'll be Dave and Davey on location. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bat. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. It's, it's a huge opportunity for the fans because when I was a kid growing up, you know, there was no opportunity to watch live professional bass fishing on television. Fox Sports has given us that platform this year for the fans to watch us fishing live. It's a great opportunity for not just the anglers and not just bass, but for the entire world to really see and become aware of what we do. Yeah, baby.
Welcome back to continued coverage on location in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin. Hard to believe it's the second last day of school, a very rare semifinal Sunday. We're going to have championship Monday this time around. But our second last day of the 2022 season, we've still got a lot to decide. We decided our Falcon Rods Rookie of the Year yesterday, but still our tournament going on. And of course, our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race atop the tournament leaderboard right now. Matt Airy trying to chase down his very first Bassmaster Elite Series win. And you can't help but cheer for Keith Combs in third place. He's had a tough season. He's outside of the Classic Cup. But the best part about this final event is if you win, you are in to the biggest event in bass fishing. And that is the Bassmaster Classic. Welcome here to the Lacrosse Loggers Baseball Stadium. I'm joined by two-time bass, two-time angler of the year you should have won it a couple times you just came so so <laughs> close and Bassmaster classic champion and bass fishing hall of famer davy height and uh davy it has drizzled and rained all day long people say it's good luck if it rains on your wedding is it good fishing in the rain yeah it absolutely is this time of the year you know we're up on the upper part of the mississippi river a lot of large mouth and small mouth bath here but but the largemouth bass really like these cloudy, low-pressure, rainy, drizzly rain days. So many anglers, you know, that don't fish tournaments a lot think, oh, I'm not going fishing on those rainy days. But it's actually a wonderful day to go fishing, and you can tell that by seeing the catches like we have today. They were catching them early and often out on the water. And the water is, of course, the Mississippi River, a giant playing field to finish off the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series. And for the fifth time, we return to La Crosse, Wisconsin. But Matt Airy trying to win an Elite Series event for the very first time. Well, we slid over here to a mat. I've had a few frog bites each day, but I don't think I've weighed a fish on a frog. <clears throat> so we're, uh, we're gonna keep them honest. There's a lot less pressure in the area today. Not a lot less, there's less pressure. <laughs> Area's still getting beat down pretty bad, but a couple guys have bailed out. I'm hoping to pick up a bonus fish or two later, especially on this frog once this rain quits and uh, things settle down a little bit. We're gonna go back to our starting spot here in just a second, since it's kind of settled out. See if we can uh, fire them up again and catch a few there. The right ones are there if we can. <clears throat> no help, I don't think. No, nope, little guy. This is the problem. That's what my frog bass have looked like. <laughs> you pick up a frog thinking you're going to get a big bite, you catch, you catch these all day long. But when, when, they, when they eat it like that, When they eat it like that, that's good. We were just I talking about the rain. The rain. Uh, frog, but everything I've caught in the tournament's been a little. It's Matt but there, it's but the, the, the rain and the clouds, these fish get out from under this thick matted vegetation in Rome, and a lot of the fish we caught or saw caught earlier today or in the open water, once that sun comes out, these fish gravitate up under this shade of this mat of vegetation. One thing Matt mentioned is less pressure. You gotta imagine there'll be less local pressure on the body yep. of water as well. Absolutely. As all Bassmaster fans know, one of the big differences with our sport is it's played on a public playing field. There's nobody holding up a shush sign. <laughs> there's so many so many different things that are out of the control of these anglers that they have to deal with each and every day number one the weather obviously uh and we've had different weather conditions each and every day uh yesterday we had rain but it was more storms you know uh in in that front yesterday but but today just a light steady rain which is actually perfect conditions for Fish for largemouth bass like we talked about. But, you know, you also mentioned local fishing. It's a weekend. It's a, it's a wonderful time to be out on the water. But this drizzle rain will, will keep, keep a lot of people at home.
Four box Combs, Polnick, Airy, and Brian New. And man, what a northern swing Brian New has had. You know, top 10 last week and looks like potentially another top 10 again here this week. Yeah, it's it's so interesting to see uh, in this four box you have, have two anglers from North Carolina and Texas and looks like Brandon Polnick, you know, obviously from another part of the world is uh, going to seal the deal with his second angler of the year. So uh, these guys are well-rounded throughout the country. Joining, a, if he does it, I mean, joining a very rare club, only 11 people have ever won multiple AOYs, and you just happen to be one of those people. So how does uh, how does one club member welcome another? Uh, there... We we actually talked, we, we went to a uh, Rapala dinner last night, and we actually talked about uh, having a, taking a special photo because it's, it's really cool. I, I always love to to get a photo with, with the winner of each event. But yesterday, the, the rookie of the year, and today it looks like uh, we'll crown the angler of the year. It's really, really cool. So you kind of feel like you're part of a fraternity of only – he would be the 12th person in the 54-year history of the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. No special handshake or anything? <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. He, he'll he be – you know, Brandon, he's had so much success here on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. You know, it started in the nation and worked his way up through it. But he gets emotional. So we'll just have to see how that rolls. It kind of depends on whether it's going to be a handshake or a big old hug or what, what he might feel like doing at the moment. No, I just meant, like, if you're part of the club, maybe you, you, you get a special handshake. I mean, you learn. <laughs> no? Dakota ring. Back out in the water and watching Combs, who another great story here. Tough season for the eight-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. So the only way he can make it to the Super Bowl of bass fishing is with a victory here this week. And he said he approached the tournament just a little bit different with that in mind. And on cue, hooked up. Looks like a good one for him, too. Yeah, this this is a unique tournament. And, in fact, that the winner gets an automatic berth to the Bassmaster Classic. And there he is. We're used bigger, to seeing Keith Combs in that classic, and unless he wins here this week, he it won't happen bigger. for him this year. I don't think that's a. I wouldn't bet against three, Keith Combs winning this event. I mean, he's two, a three quarter, he's a grinder. Don't find out if that fish is going to help him, but definitely put himself in the position week after week. No matter where we are, the anglers always say the same thing. I want one thing. I want to go into the final day with a chance. And Keith Combs has definitely given himself a chance. But atop the leaderboard, Matt Airy with 43 pounds, 13 ounces. It is a very rare semifinal Sunday. Who will be our top 10 going into championship Monday? the size of that bass. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Brandon Polnick. That's the last time he held the, what many anglers will argue is the most coveted trophy in professional bass fishing. And that is progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. He took that title back in 2017. And man, he'd love to celebrate again here today and join a very rare club, which my partner Davey Height just happens to be a member of a two-time Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. But that a great aerial shot of our location, and that is in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin. Atop the leaderboard, Matt Airy, and uh, he's been close before, Davey Height. He has. Uh, you certainly think about the Bassmaster Classic. Matt Airy came so close to winning. Uh, and that's certainly something that will change your career along with the Progressive Bass Angler of the Year. But Matt Arias is overdue to hold a blue trophy over his head, no doubt about it. Well, for those of you just joining us, welcome in. A little rainy here, but dry where you're watching from. But let's catch up on what's been going on in the water. Your Yamaha Midday Report. 
And let's start it off with Drew Bedden, a former Elite Series champion and uh, has had a solid tournament all week. Yeah, Dave, we've talked about how the weather has affected the fishing here and it's much better today. Well, here's a very obvious location. We've had quite a bit of rain yesterday and today. And, and this is a spillway coming from Pool 7 down into Pool 8. A lot of current there. We've been talking about how these fish relate to current. They certainly re are relating to current right here for Drew Bitt. This is a great place, and this, this place is going to continue to reload. Even with pressure, I fish here many, many times. This place will reload for Drew Bitt. Drew Benton taking advantage of all that water coming into this system, but a guy trying to take advantage of a unique opportunity in this tournament. Win it, and you're in the Bassmaster Classic, and Keith Combs has his eyes on that. He certainly does, and, and you mentioned earlier that Keith Combs has a little different approach to this event. He knows that he needs to win this event. Like we said, Keith Combs has been in a number of Bassmaster Classics, and he never wants to miss another one while he's fishing full-time on the Bassmaster Elite Series Trail. So he is making a farther run down to Pool 9, and the gamble is certainly working out for him so far this week. Eight Bassmaster Classics for Keith Combs, and he would love to make it number nine here. As you say, punch his ticket to Knoxville, Tennessee, the home of next year's Bassmaster Classic. But some people are just quick starters, and this angler definitely is one of them. Won the first Elite Series event he fished, and a strong finisher here, threatening to make two top tens in a row. Yeah, he absolutely is, and we talked about Brandon Polnett working his way up through the, the nation and the Opens and then into the Bassmaster Elite Series. Brian knew, really got it. Got his name known nationwide as being a great co-angler, uh, having great finishes as a co-angler. He has worked his way up, was the uh, Opens Angler of the Year, came to the Elite Series, won his very first Elite Tournament. And very much like today, he got off to a great start this morning, was the leader for the first hour or two this morning. So Brian New has definitely been able to get it started in a hurry in every, in every tournament trail he's been in and also especially here on the Elite Series. Brian New got that title so early in his career, his first stop. But Matt Airy still searching for his first Elite Series victory. And I think he's well within shot of that right now, Davey. Yeah, Matt Airy loves to fish a frog. We've seen that even though he's from North Carolina, a lot of people don't associate that with frog fishing, but he's just a well-rounded fisher, fisherman. Matt Airy lost a fish on a frog and cost him, probably cost him the Bassmaster Classic. We remember seeing him, seeing him miss that fish and just losing that narrowly. But we'd all love to see Matt Airy, just a nice guy, a good family guy that's always talking, saying hello to his children and his wife. He'd love to see him win his first blue trophy here this week. Yeah, I think his girls were at a birthday party yesterday. Yes. Close friends, and they, they were watching the weigh-in. Nothing says happy birthday like a Bassmaster weigh-in. Speaking of happy birthday, it's not his birthday, but uh, that's my awkward segue so we can get out to Matt Airy. Look at those weights. We knew it was going to be tight coming in, but unofficially three anglers within just ounces of one another. First, second, and third place. Okay. See Mike Iaconelli in 15th. We're going to rattle be, back up here to he our would love spot to get inside the top 10 to finish and off the see season. If they set back up, seems like every time we let them rest for a second, they get repositioned. We bust them up. When we bust them up, it's a uh, fast and furious, and then it just quits. Doesn't matter what you throw in there. How y'all doing? Good. Thank you. Just gonna idle up. See Matt Airy throwing a frog here recently, but I, I'm assuming he's talking about going to an area where there's been a group of fish probably setting up on a, a depression or, or a current swing. And, and those fish, when they get in groups like that and you hook one, oftentimes that group will follow those 
follow that one fish that you have hooked out to the boat and you have to let them set back up in position and get them to bite again. Chris Johnson, the first Canadian ever to win an Elite Series event. Most people paint him as a smallmouth angler, but here. those people don't watch bass live. The bodies of water he grew up around look just like where he's fishing. Bass Live is so great. We talked about how a lot of people that don't fish often, certainly not elite series anglers, uh, wouldn't go fishing on a rainy day. There's a lot of anglers throughout the country that would never throw their baits in the thick vegetation like you see Chris Johnson fishing here right now. Talked about hot finishes to the season. I mean, he's had an incredible season all year in third place for progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. But at the halfway point of our last two tournaments, Chris Johnson has been knocking at that door. And uh, I think he's led day twos the last two weeks. Wow. And two totally opposite yeah. conditions and lakes, uh, the river. Just, just, you couldn't be any more different than the last two events have been. There's more green in that one shot of Chris Johnson right there than we've seen the entire time in Oahe. Yes. Brandon Lester has done his job, put as much pressure as possible as he could put on Brandon Palmick, you know, and if he makes the top 10 here, Depending on how Paulnick finishes, I mean, he's got to get back here to make it official, but um, it's imperative for Lester to, to make the top 10, obviously, to keep any chance of winning that. Yeah, you know, that and also, you know, they pay down the angler of the year. It's not just the winner. Obviously, the winner is what everyone wants to be, but, but there's nice checks that come all the way down. Uh, so a lot of these anglers that maybe realize that, hey, Brandon's probably got a great chance to lock this up. It, it'll be really tough. Well, they're fishing for not only money in this event itself, but a AOI money that, you know, it's, it's substantial. I didn't weigh any of them, but I think we're one bite away from making the top ten. You know? Gerald Swindle along with Keith Combs, locked down to pool nine. And five foot deep around. Uh, the lockmaster informed them they would have some barge traffic midday, so they, they'll have to make a decision whether they leave the area that they would like to be in really early or just gamble a little bit more this afternoon. You have to make it back with those fish on time. How big is that gamble here with these locks? Like, how much time are we talking? Oh, I, th I think it's it's a real big gamble. And in the time of year with locking, you know, they, they're they're transporting a lot of corn and, and weed and that sort of thing this time of year on the upper Mississippi. Other times of year, they're not so much barge traffic. So you really have to consider how many barges are, are going up and down the river any certain day. And also, what do you have to, to lose? You know, like a, a Keith Combs and, and Gerald Swindle, that's probably why they're down there. They went a little farther to get away because they would both like to win this tournament. Gerald firmly in the Bassmaster Classic, but but um, would certainly like to win his first elite trophy where Keith Combs has, has done that, but he's out of reach of the Classic unless he wins this one event. So two two different things for both of these anglers, but it's all part of making those decisions each and every day. I think that's one of the unique things about this event particularly. When you think about it, every angler almost has no pressure of points. If you're in the classic, in you're safe. You really have no pressure. Is. If there's a bass in there, that's pretty open under that. He, there's a good chance he'll be able to see this. And I think it's worth coming out there and throwing at a few of them.
And if you're Keith Combs, you're in the same situation. You just, there's no thought of points. It's all about swinging. Yes. I can kind of tell by the texture of the mat when the bait hits, like how thin it is. And if it's real thin, that's where you're going to catch them at. Box showing just how different the conditions are all over this incredible system here in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin. And that's your leaderboard. Matt Airy, if there's a birthday party watching today, they will be celebrating Matt Airy atop the leaderboard on semifinal Sunday. Got to find out who our top 10 are going to be and move into Championship Monday at stop number nine of the Bassmaster Elite Series. The guaranteed rate, Bassmaster Elite. Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome back to the shores of the Mississippi River here in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin. For the fifth time, the Bassmaster Elite Series visits this incredible destination. And this one, to cap off the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series season, last second last day of competition and the goal to get into the top 10 or if you're Brandon Polnick your goal is to seal the deal on your second progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title and join a club that my partner Davey Height happens to be a member of. Toothy Tom! Yeah, yesterday uh, such a big day for Brandon sure Polnick. He, he I didn't struggled get a like we look. don't see him struggle very often. Didn't get a good look. I might have to double check Huh? I just, I'm not 100% sure. Kind of looked pikey. Yes. Nope. That's a large mouth. Shows how much we know, David. Right? <laughs> well, could have been a pike. Get in here! In the, living on the, alongside a largemouth bass. That's what I get for doing dumb stuff like that. Broke my rock. Yeah! That'll call. Glad I double checked. <laughs> I just wasn't sure that one was just a, a perfect toothy day dumb. for top water. Or maybe they were buddies and they were hanging out together. I'm gonna have to do Thank a little you, repair in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> got another one in the Brandon boat. catching most of his fish today on a Storm Arashi top walker that he helped design. Okay. You think how young his he is in his career and, and using a bait to help win his second AOI title that he, oh. that he helped yeah, design. I, I think it'll call, but I don't have a two-pounder anymore. I forgot about that. Incredible. I'm thinking I still had a two-pounder. <laughs> it'll definitely call, though. What a difference a day makes. That's exactly what I was just about to say. Quarter. Yesterday, that fish would have never come back for a second chance. Number five. Uh, he had one or two, I think mm -hmm. two fish by this time yesterday, or only one. Brandon Polnick breathing fire here on semifinal Sunday. A much different day number two. But let's jump over to Brian New. Day number three, confused Davey Height. Championship Monday tournaments always kind of confuse me, I know that. Oh, we're done for the rest of the year. The rest, oh, hooked up. Yeah. Solid fish there, to help him. Look at that. want them to get that vibrating jig. <laughs> Where's my scales? Probably give him the lead. I think you'll help. We always have pre-tournament predictions. Get asked about that. You know, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I really feel like the person that wins here will be doing a lot of different things, not only just using different baits, but not just fishing mats or not just fishing main river current. Doing a mixture of things. And Brian New has certainly been mixing it up big time. Using soft plastics on current breaks, fishing vegetation. I think he had 20 plus rods rigged on in front of his boat the first day of this tournament. Most all with totally different baits on them. That's one thing that really stood out at takeoff. You know, a lot of times by this point in the tournament, anglers have dialed it down to one or two rods. They're pretty dialed in. Everybody's deck was full of rods. I yes. mean, minimum amount of rods I saw on the deck in the morning was five. I mean, Brian New has five on his knee right there. <laughs> A popular pick every time, no matter where we go, Scott Martin, legions of fans follow him but came into this event needing a big, big finish. And Davey Hyde, I think he's done that. He certainly has. Still a player there going on to try to here, make here. the Bassmaster Classic, which here, was here. his goal, but to win this event. Right now, just about three pounds back. They're here. They're right where I left them. Uh, need to figure out my smallest one. I need to be calling quick here. Move your bag, please. Please. Good man. We're about to destroy him, dude. Okay, he's not going to help. But I do need to figure out what my smallest fish is. So I don't sit here and try to call while I got them all fired up. Yeah. Scott Martin Cullen, get back to a four box airy, new Polonic and Swindle. That was a nice smallmouth that he culled there. Did not help him at all. That was a, a nice fish. He might have a little more than what we think he has on Bass Track. He's mentioned a bunch of times this week, his father, Roland Martin, has 19 of those, not Elite Series trophies, but the version of the Elite Series at the time he fished yes. bass, and he wants one bad. Yeah, obviously his dad, Roland Martin, it's, it's phenomenal. <laughs> to, I mean, I can't even conceive thinking of you know, winning 19 Events at the highest level in our sport. I mean, that's whether they were called elites or invitationals or opens or, you know, a lot of different names through 50 plus years, but the highest level of our professional bass fishing sport to win 19 times. Brandon mixing it up with different top orders. When you want to throw up in that matted vegetation, he uses a popping frog or a walking frog. And fishing outside it, like you see here, he uses that top walker bait with treble hooks. Hook and land percentage is really good with his three sets of treble hooks on this bait. One of the coolest things about this fishery is you can almost catch him any way you want. Like... All week, if you look at just, I mean, there's been predominant patterns, but literally there's nothing that you can't throw here. Yeah, and, and that's, you can get caught up in throwing what you like to throw, but the fish, you know, the size isn't there. But you, it's always key, but it's, it's such a big factor here uh, to catch two and a half to three pounders instead of one and a half to two pounders. I mean, this is big bass, big stage, big dreams, and. You've got to target the biggest five fish that you can bring to the scales. It's fun to watch, though. Just, you know, you go from vibrating jig to frog to top water to soft plastics. It's, it's so fun to watch. 
Yeah, numbers don't matter, and numbers seem to frustrate our anglers this yeah. week. I mean, we heard Matt Heron on stage. I caught a hundred of them. He said, "We get a little spoiled, I guess." You know <laughs> how, how? Yeah. How sorry do you feel for someone that caught a hundred today? <laughs> but it's it's all relative. If your problem's catching too many fish, you don't really have problems. Yeah. From a four box, let's look at our leaderboard to see how we're sitting right now. Brian New, as you said, Davey Height, took over the lead. 44 pounds even. Matt Airy right behind him, just a few ounces. And look how close that leaderboard is. And your Falcon Rods rookie of the year, he isn't done yet. Chase Shakurik up in sixth place. Watch out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't go anywhere. Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. You've been very good to me today. You've actually been very good to me for many, many a time. Yeah, they don't even make it anymore. Uh, this was a bait that I helped design years and years ago. Uh, for Stormarashi and it has helped me make a lot of money over the years. When I won Rayburn, everyone thought that I caught all my fish on a, a big worm and a Nico rig, but nearly a third of my fish came on this bait every morning. So. It has done me very well. I'm sure that's the one that I said, oh, that looked like a good one that blew up. It's all about the progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title, and you see that coveted trophy right there. My partner, Davey Hyde, happens to have not one, but two. And our maybe eventual champion was catching them two at a time this morning. A much different day Brandon Polnick is having here today. And where are we today? We're in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin. And from uh, the raw, rugged of South Dakota, we traveled nine hours just showing how diverse this great uh, part of the world is. And just a, a nine hour trip, you can go from somewhere that there isn't one weed around to one of the most, most lush green fisheries. And it doesn't look like that with Chris Johnson right now. It just looks very, very wet. Very, very wet, but it's been a good fishing day. Temperatures are nice, so it's not really an issue to have this light rain like we've had all day. There's some big fish here for Chris, so. Boy, that on, baby. really looked like a nice one. He jumped. Better one. Now he's gonna be a little bigger. Chris, another one of those anglers. We saw him flipping thick vegetation just a few minutes ago, and now he's fishing offshore, a little, little sandbar hump. They're cold, but we need to do a little better. Smallmouth bass. From the angler sitting in third place in our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points, Chris Johnston, to our leader in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points the prodigy, Brandon Polinick. No worries about barge traffic with Brandon. He's oh. fishing very close to take off. That's a safe strategy. I look big. The tail in there. Oh, I don't know if he'll help or not. Nope, I don't think he's gonna help. Ah, 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 no. You're not gonna help, buddy. Here. Chill, 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 chill. He got it that time. What did I tell you I was gonna catch one? 
on this point. Took him till the last half hour of the well, day to fill his limit yesterday. And today it looks like he's catching a limit every half hour. I don't think he'll help. Things just flowing so much better for him today. That fish hit it three times before it got it. What? From Brandon Polnick, your leader in Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. We head over to his nearest pursuer, Brandon Lester. What a season he's had. Two wins, one in the Opens and one in the Elite Series. Feel good for the Polnick family. They put up with enough yesterday. You imagine how nerve-wracking that one. was. That certainly had to be. Probably more so for his family than even for him. Help him a little bit. This show's brought to you by the letter B, Davey. <laughs> I used to watch the show when I was a kid, and that was brought to you by a letter. Well, this show's brought to you by the letter B, and that stands for Brandon from one to another. And back to Polonic. I think all tournaments should be top water tournaments. I agree. <laughs> Let's have a oh, you dirty, oh. dirty dog, you. That was such a weird bite. He like, and he he got a little piece of it. I think that looked like a pretty good one. Ah. That looked like a pretty good one right there. The way he bit it, just like, he more sucked the bottom out of it than coming unglued on it. It looked like that whale shark, Kyle. Just sucking bait down. Airport toilet. That's not a big one, though. You're not making the cut. Maybe that was you. Maybe you just thought you were bigger than you are. You got a face full of VMC, huh? Gosh, that's fun. Ooh, that one might be bigger. Stay on there. Stay down, stay down. Stay down, stay down. Yes, yes. That's gonna be close. He'll be close to helping. Got him with the old chin itch. Stop at your chin a little bit. Now oh, he's gonna be close. 
Don't shake. Nah, he's not, he's not gonna make it. Oh. I'll check number two, but just to give a double look, but I don't think it'll help. Like 244. I don't think he's gonna help. It's that long skinny one. What a day Brandon Polnick is having here on semifinal Sunday. And Davey Hype, we started this segment talking about, you said the fish are going to bite better in the rain. And once again, proving <laughs> that he knows what he's talking about. Man, did they ever. Oh, so, such a different day for Brandon Polnick today. He just said, I'm having so much fun. Yesterday at this time with only two fish in his live well, fun was far from what he was having. A lot of pressure, but he endured it, did great. Caught his fifth fish with about 30 minutes to go before he had to check in. Today, Brandon Polnick certainly is just having fun. 199 days ago, this season started in Palatka, Florida. And Brandon Polnick may be bringing a progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title to a finish line here at today's way. And lots more coming. Me and Davey Hike got to go hit up our plush craft services. But we're going to hand the honors off to the crew back in Marathon Studios. T.Z. Ronnie and, of course, Such. Who's going to win this tournament, Davey Hike? Oh, I wouldn't bet against Keith Combs, Matt Airy, or Brian New. Oh, always <laughs> dead on with his picks. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Still in our third hour of fishing here. Guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at the Mississippi River. The final stand for these anglers who have fished all year long on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the ninth of nine tournaments. There's our leaderboard as it stands right now. The composition of it, the guys who are in the top 10 hasn't changed much with the addition of, uh, well, Brandon Lester has moved up in there for the time being right now, but uh, the, the men on top, Brian New and Matt Airy, the ones who have been there for a good long while. Gerald Swindle has been in, in it all day long. And the man who started with the lead, Mark Zona, Chris Johnston, is, is having the hardest day. Of yeah, our top 10 definitely. So far. And he, he teed us up. If my morning spot doesn't fire, I've got some issues. Issues indeed have happened for Chris Johnston back down to pool nine. Gerald Swindle. Maybe that's him. That's a pretty good one, though. No. I don't think he'll help you neither. No, he felt good though. He loaded up. I'm like, hey, I think every one of them's in. I got confidence out the kazoo that little biggin's gonna get it. You see him feathering that bladed jig like a worm. I mean, every fish in the river wants to live right here. You know, a couple few more biggins gotta want to live there. Keeper after keeper in. So for Gerald Swindle, uh, a couple little sand spots that come out from the grass that have been key because of that current that naturally flows through this slough in this bay that's normally protected. There's a slight area ends up dumping off that sand, but this is a, from the locals perspective that I talked to asked about this region said, this is a place that they go to. They're never like leaving from this area. They're always coming here towards the end of the year. So we go over to Brandon Lester. Just saw him pop back into the top 10. What have I got? Oh gosh, big one, that's what I got.
293, almost a three pounder. Put him in as a two and three quarter. That's a good one. Slower start today for Brandon Lester, but catching up. Boy, he's Brandon back on pace. Top 10. Yeah, he's on pace now. Doesn't have anything over three pounds. Paul Mueller does everything over three pounds. He's got 15-6, our big bag of the day so far. He's jumped from 43rd to 12th, trying to get in our top 10 for tomorrow. And I was wrong. It's not just Swindle, Combs, a little bit of Matt Heron in Pool 9. Paul Mueller has also been one that's gone the farthest of anyone yes. all the way to the yes. bottom of Pool 9. He has he is visited our top 10 during the morning. Oh, he's going to be close. <sighs> Oh, that was stupid. That was stupid. I got a little too overconfident. I was reaching down to grab it. I got that one. That one's not gonna help. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. He wasn't like a major help, but he would have been close. I knew I got knocked that first time, though, that first cast. Did not really look like that fish would help Polinick. Pretty much everything in his live well right now bigger than that. We're going to head back south on pool eight with your day two leader, Chris Johnston. Chris Johnston with a brutally slow morning catching fish, but size was not there on his primary smallmouth spot, but every day he has caught big ones, but still sitting on that small sandbar. This has got some weight. This is big, whatever it is. It's a nice one. The line went slack. I couldn't find my bait. It's not a giant. Definitely helped though. Always on the last cast, just about to leave. Now we gotta make a few more. Long and skinny. But we'll take him. He wasn't coming off. Got him double hooked. Just about to leave. Last cast in this spot. You'll help. Yeah. Nice Mississippi River smallmouth for Chris Johnson right there. Helps the cause. Let's get back down to Gerald Swindle. There. That one should help. 
Well, I think Gerald Swindle said he lives on Lake Gunnersville, one of the most famous lakes in the country, great grass lake as well, and he says, what I learned there? is I could run around Gunnersville to a lot of different places, and you end up running and spending more time than fishing when you find an area that has fish stay in it. That's why he chose to get away from everyone, find some fish, and he said, this is just where I'm going to camp out all week if I can. Obviously, today with the barge traffic, he's got to change his plan up a little bit, but he says the barge folks have been, or the lock folks have been nothing but fantastic this week, getting them in and out like within 15 minutes. To 11. Of course, AOI, Progressive Angler of the Year points, a big part of the story here at our last event of the year. There's a man who's been a big part of Angler of the Year history. How about Gerald Swindle, two-time Progressive Angler of the Year winner, so separated by a lot of years. First one was back in 2004. Yeah, an angler that has not won a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament, but two Angler of the Year titles, which says just how consistent he has been throughout his entire career multiple classic births still looking for that victory well and still in the mix here I mean, and we talked about it said this one set up yes. in his wheelhouse early in this event great to have you with us here on a live coverage of this uh, semi-final sunday progressive bassmaster angler of the year title is uh, looking a lot more clear to us right now you, you guys made a great point about as we as we look forward to who's going to win this thing hard to pick it at this point but you made a great point about the guys who have slowed down. You don't find a needle in the haystack at a full sprint. The guys who have slowed down and really picked apart and found those one cast tiny spots. That's been the whole key of this tournament, talking about Scott Martin really dialed us in last night and said the Mississippi River fish is frighteningly similar to a lot of Florida lakes. When you get in a hurry, you get in very big trouble on this stretch of the Mississippi River and kind of look for late day big ones. I know that sounds very vague, but every single day of this tournament, a lot of your leaders, they come out firing like we got to see all morning long here on FS1. Look for those late day calls some way, shape or form today and tomorrow. It's going to take one of those four to five pounders, which is absolute gold on this stretch of the river to win that trophy. One thing that we also need to cover, we talked about Rookie of the Year. We crowned Jay Shakir at that 90-point lead over Cody Huff. No chance of Cody Huff being able to catch him today. We could crown Angler of the Year today with how good Brandon Polinick has performed this morning already. One thing we'll also keep a look at, there's about five anglers fishing today in our top 47 that do not want to severely drop. They don't want to drop 20 spots uh, in this tournament, lose 20 points, and drop out of the classic cut line. For the most part, there's not a lot of movement at the classic cut line. One guy, Brock Mosley, 40 fourth in our classic cut line right now three points from the classic if he moved from 18th today and got to 15th he would be able to punch his ticket otherwise he has to be the first man out and hope the winner of this event double qualifies to get him in but a couple guys who have made some late season runs to get to the classic him and Carl Jockums and Austin Felix as well and the one thing missing today that we got to see yesterday was there was a lot of bigger than average size smallmouth we have not seen much of no, that today. No. Ronnie, you just mentioned Brock Mosley. He just filled his limit. He's jumped to 20th place right now. He's one point behind Shane LeHue in the angle of the year points to get inside our classic cut. Yeah, and you don't want everyone below Brock Mosley. 45th to about 51st are not fishing today in the points race. So you do not want to give back points, even if you don't make it up and pass Carl Jockinson. You don't want to give back points to where now you're the second man or third man out of the class. You want to yeah. stay right there if you can. 18th or better for Brock today. Paul Mueller's at it again, a three pound, 12 ounce fish. He's the first one over 16 pounds today. Wow. He's up into 11th place, knocking on the door. Something, something you said before we went live this morning, Ronnie, was Carl Jacobson obviously on the cut for his Bassmaster Classic berth, really is safe with a lot of our top 10 anglers and the way points yep. are laying out. You also said Keith Combs, though, would be his nemesis. Keith Combs, if he punched that ticket, if he won this tournament. He that... only helps himself. Right. Yes. And that's kind of when we say Does that hurt fishing Carl? for himself. Yes, because I, he'll still be the first man out if he was to fall. But right now, Carl's still safely 43rd. So Keith and Combs we still have open Harry there. Brian knew those three basically in a virtual tie since these are unofficial weights right now, right on top of the leaderboard. Very, very close as it has been all week long and will be till the end of this tournament. It's going to be a tight, tight race till the very end. 
plenty more fishing time left on this semi-final Sunday for you in the upper Mississippi, and we'll take this quick break and come right back. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. Julio Rodriguez leads the Mariners as they take on Jose Ramirez and the Guardians, or Carlos Correa and the Twins. That'll Jose Abreu and the White Sox in a fiery mm -hmm. AL Central showdown. Saturday, 7 Eastern on Fox. Check local listings for the game in your area. Boys of summer moving into <laughs> fall here towards... Uh, That's a heron. Uh, uh, that, how, what? Whoa. What? what? Oh, oh, no, it's right. not. Oh, my, we, you we do been. not disrespect a grebe like that. Reborn as an ornithologist here. Herons love eelgrass, especially inside lines of regularity. You see that stump, too, he was focusing on. We're going to get back out on the water right now. Pool 8, Brandon Polinick with a big day, which it looks like he has sealed. He just joined in our coverage here. Bassmaster Elite Series sealed the deal on his second Angler of the Year title. Pretty much all he has to do is get back to yeah. weigh in on time at this that's, point that's without the... any penalties or anything. Just a normal day. Just normal. No stress. Nothing weird. Grass right there. So I paused it so it's not cycling, but that's the eelgrass line. And then you see this hard point extends out. And then that little white dot right there to the right of that cursor, that's a bass sitting right on the end of that tip of that hard bottom spot. Good look at Brandon Pollinick. So when I first rolled up here, there was like a bunch of little white dots. And there he is. <laughs> That's a white dot on your 360. <laughs> like I've looked at that thing a time or three. Yeah, I'm about ready to move. Need to change the scenery. At one more place in here, they should, should be some, or could be some. Oh, come on, looking for big bites. Well, he has bounced a lot of areas that we have seen Brandon Lester in the He'll last three days. Probably come down around that next buoy if I get bit. We may catch one here and there down this stretch, but most likely it's coming down there. Right in that little opening. Another little hard spot right there. Something just rushed it, I thought. That was weird. That water looks really dirty, but it's actually not. If you look at a lot of the fish that are in these guys' live wells, that water's a little bit, little bit tannicky, but for the most part, where the leaders and guys that have made the cut in this tournament, it's getting away from a lot of that dirty water. From a lot, of, we had a lot of runoff the first day of this tournament, which destroyed a portion of the field. Brock Mosley just landed a three pounder. He's jumped to 13th place. And then the AOI updates on the site. He's 43rd now, which is currently our last man in. He's not Carl Jacobson out by one point. Wow. Where is that? Where does it update on the site? <laughs> on the bass track, right? Over to the right of the bass track. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> Let's go for Brandon Polinick. Having his best day of the tournament so far. Picked a good time to do that. Sure, all the way out to Keith Combs. Keith Combs, who has the 
possibility of winning this thing and gaining the what are world the, championship. What are the, the odds Bass of Master that? Classic. I just, really? I like, so, so think so about that. Best. It's, but it, what a story. I mean, we saw last year Justin Atkins was in that same position, came right. up about a pound or so short. I believe Clark Winlet was as well. And this is where Combs did the majority of his damage yesterday. Brandon, Brandon Palmick did it a decade ago. Ooh. Oof. He choked it, dude. Ooh. Sexy frog is gone. Combs sent us That's a picture. That's what you want. I saw a little movement in there. And that was him. Sent us a picture of his sexy did. frog that he was throwing yesterday. He's two and a half. I mean, gone. As small as a two, he should tie for the lead with this fish. Wow. Oh. Yeah, he's, it's right in the roof. I mean, he couldn't have came off ever. Well, gets rid of that other small mouse. He sent us a picture of his frog yesterday, the damage after oh. the flurry that he went yeah. in on pool nine. It, when Ronnie does the screen, it, it, it is, you feel sorry for the bait. It's so, so <laughs> annihilated. So wiped out. Have you ever apologized to an inanimate object before? Like a frog? For what the punishment you no put through? I have what you're saying right yeah, now. I again. understand. Combs, who's won in the neighboring state of Minnesota, the uh, Angler of the Year Championship in 2017. But if you really look at this season, there were so many tournaments that set up in Keith Combs' wheelhouse, not to do well, but to win. You could go to Fork and you go to Pickwick in the summertime months. Ronnie talked about it so many different times with fantasy. He's great at the St. John's River to Absolutely. start the year. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. And he's kind of been someone this time of the season, the last two years, he has been the first man or the second man of out the of the classic. classic You're right. The last You're two right. years. So mm. prior to the two years of barely missing the classic in this year, which is below that, a tougher year for sure, he was a top 10 angler in, a in AOI every year since his rookie year. Yeah. He may not be excelling on the uh, elites, but he's winning events in, around Texas yeah, every year. Outside of his doorstep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's not hurting. No. But you know, I mean, look, man, he he's is a competitor. A, I'm around that dude a lot. We spend a lot of time the last couple of years. Uh, does not set, does not settle for that. Matt Heron with a three and a half pounder. He's over 13 pounds today, knocking on the door. Five ounces out of our top 10 right now. Well, you see a lot of these guys after their primary starting spot where they catch a limit, getting up shallow and a lot of that way thicker cover. Heron's about a quarter pound of head of Paul Mueller, 11th and 12th. They're only 310 back of the lead. They would en both enjoy the win and in aspects of this event. As we see Matt Airy in the top right of your screen throwing a frog now, a lot of the anglers have held off from doing that because of the heavier rains this morning and it doesn't position fish well. But yesterday they had a strong south wind. When it wasn't raining, it was still very windy for people and for Gerald Swindle, down in pool nine, his area is protected from the north, the flow of the current, the north winds, weather from that direction. But from the south, it's open and susceptible to that wind. He said yesterday he did a lot more damage with the chatter bait and some of the moving baits because he could not get calm enough waters to throw a frog because it was just so Man, windy and wavy in his area. I saw that grass right there. 
There's a couple keys. There should be one sitting. Wind blowing in there on it. One thing that Combs told us, he's concentrated a lot more on lily pads instead of duckweed, like you see Matt Airy in. And he said the, on day number one, so many fish missed that frog. And yesterday made the comment, every single one of them got it. <laughs> Combs and Brian know we're in a virtual tie, 44 pounds even for both of them. Huh. Really the thing that Combs is going to be fishing against a lot like Paul Mueller, a lot like Gerald Swindle. They're eventually going to have to start like it to be windy like this. thinking about getting near that lock in the frog. next hour just to avoid that barge traffic and getting caught on the downside right. of Pool 9. He's just coming at me so fast. Oh, heck. That joker was getting it. Small, two and a half pounds, it will not help. Not I knew help. 15 pounds, that one is not going to be relevant to his effort here today, but what an effort he has put forth, basically tied for the lead. He is tied for the lead unofficially with Matt Airy at this point right there, Keith Combs, and all of our top five within a pound and 13 ounces, basically a smallish keeper, a, sm a really small keeper in this place. That's how tight things are right here. We talked about a game of ounces. It will be to the bitter end here in the upper Mississippi in the Bassmaster Elite Series. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at the Mississippi River is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Truly a special place, pool seven, eight, and nine on the second longest river in America. That's where we're contesting it. Last time out for the Bassmaster Elite Series in 2022. They've worked hard to get here. 47 anglers out there doing their very best to make it to the top 10 today. Brandon Polinick doing what he needed to do to put himself in the position to grab that second Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year trophy. Just a great day for fish catch. Yeah, and the one thing that you definitely see, we've talked about it all tournament long, every single tournament that we've covered here. Boy, it is fun to catch two pounders here because you can catch a pile of them, but it is a mile away from a two and a half to a three pound average. Exactly what we're seeing here on Semifinal Sunday. You guys, I wanted to bring it into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. This is the fifth time the Bassmaster Elite Series has been to the Mississippi River in La Crosse, Wisconsin. We were here in 2012, 2013, 2016, 2018, and this year. Every single year we've been here, the water level range has been seven to nine feet. The only outlier there was 2018 when it was 13 feet was the readout there. This week, we're about normal five to six feet. And when it comes to the different predominant patterns we've seen, we've seen guys fishing around grass. And then when you see people on the main river or fishing off those sand points like Keith Combs, there's a couple factors that we need to look at. And all of these fish on the Mississippi River, whether they're around grass or bait fish or on the main river, they're related to current. The current that sweeps through, whether it's a small shoot or it's the main river, that current that flows through will position these fish. And as we look at this, this is obviously a moving bait. It's a hard head with a creature style bait on it. But whether it's a Carolina rig or it's a drop shot or it's a swim bait, whatever they are, when you find that 
one cast, that one line, you're able to cast there and back to back to back, we see these anglers, especially with a chatterbait today as well, catching them on the same lineup because of the way they position with that current. Now when that current also relates to grass, sometimes when we get up in the grass and you're throwing the frog or you're flipping like we talked about this morning with a lot of these anglers, they talked about uh, having to stay off of it, not able to get in the grass. The fish are kind of wandering with the cloud cover. When it comes to that, these fish position off of that grass line. The current kind of positions the other baits. And if you do throw a topwater like a walking bait or a frog on the edge of the grass, that is where the fish will position more so than up in those grass mats. And that is where anglers in the past especially have made a, a lot of good work. And we were mentioning it last segment, Keith Combs's frog from yesterday. This is probably a brand new frog that he opened up this this week and put to use throughout the tournament. And if you're wondering what the deal is and why why we're making an emphasis about it, all of these marks and scuffs above that red and black eye, those are all fish teeth marks. They have a hard, you know, teeth patch on the top and bottom of their lips. And when they come up and grab a frog, it is the most the most uh, ferocious bite that you'll probably get in a day. And it does tear up a frog. And Keith Combs, a great pattern so far this week. And obviously he is one who's kind of mixing in both the frog and the Carolina rig for both smallmouth and for largemouth this week at the Mississippi that River. Poor frog. Poor frog. Yes. See, I told you, that's what I mean. Do you ever feel letters. bad? For was sad. An I don't talk to them, well, but I mean, yeah, I, I feel bad. bad. Sad frog, happy result for Keith Combs, for sure. <laughs> Get back out the brand calling. Should catch at least one more around this little opening. One thing to also how look big at. it'll be. Don't know how big he'll be, but we should get one more right here somewhere. Come on, don't be bashful. One thing they'll also keep an eye on is the winning weight. The last four times we've been here, it's been 62, 63, 64, and 65 pounds. After two days of competition, we're on pace for right. 63 to 64 pounds right. again. We'll see if it slows down today and tomorrow or if it keeps pace. Kind of, you talked about the current, Ryan, a lot of people, it's they like it high, wide, and rolling here. And it, right there's here. less water at this time around. People were lowering their expectations. Yeah, but thought, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that. I thought it would take a little bit under 60 pounds when we talked about it during the Lake Oahe event, but we are right on pace right now. The hard part about this river, there's like, there's so many options of ways to catch them. They weigh back in the grass, they on the middle, the edge, under the mats, out of the mats. Taking a look at your BMC on point, a way, way different day for your Angler of the Year leader, Brandon Polinick, who at certain times the last 48 hours lost that lead to Brandon Lester and Chris Johnston. Not the case here today. A lot cooler, a lot calmer demeanor in the oh, boat yeah. of Brandon Polinick. Yes. He made the comment after the weigh-in yesterday, it can't get much worse than it went. I feel like the tide is going to turn. That is exactly what has happened here today. Very solid stringer, really approaching his biggest stringer of this tournament, moving up the standings and more than likely solidifying his second Fast Master Elite Series Angler of the Year title. Your VMC on point. If you look at his catches today, I'm going to throw it to yesterday and the last 90 minutes catching one keeper bass to make the cut and fish here on semifinal se Sunday. That is your Brandon Polinick VMC on point. And the one thing that the one reason we kind of were cautious about Brandon Polinick this week after seeing him struggle a little bit is that his four previous visits here, he's only made the cut one time right. and he's already superseded that best finish. So this week will be his best Mississippi River finish officially. Obviously, he had a lead and a disqualification. The 2013, 2013 event yeah. we hear. He was leading after two days by six pounds. And that was a state law 
Right. Yeah. Colin in, inadvertently Hill, had, yes. had crossed and a, thankfully a, he did a that. stupid law. Yes, it is. Very yeah. Thankfully really he dumb. did that because Bass officials worked with the states and they kind of came to an agreement and aligned their rules and that's no longer been a problem these next few visits we've had here. Well, I did a story with Brandon and he told me that was probably great for his career. He went out yeah. the next event and had to go for the victory and he won it. That's a good one. That was a phenomenal oh, it's a blow up. It's a giant. Oh. Oh, yeah, baby. That's a tank for here. Woo. That is a stud. Holy. I missed him probably about 10 casts ago, one bun in my frog. Took about 10 casts for him to hit it again. I didn't know how big it was, he just bunted it. That is a tank. Yeah, gets us back in the game. <laughs> wow, that's a good one. All right, let's get Watch this call right here, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Put him back on top. This is where I lost that big one yesterday and uh, a three pound or so. We're going nice and slow. We still got some left. To work. Come on. That was definitely big. That is a giant for the cross. Keep your eye on this bite. We talked about guys getting in that thicker cover, frog fishing. Keep your eye on it. Good. That is That's absolutely great. phenomenal. One of the biggest bass that we have seen in this tournament so far on camera. Big one for Christian. And if your smallmouth are not going to be quite the average that they were, that fish right there is an absolute. That's a game changer. Yeah, it must have. Johnson. Absolutely. That is a must have. Good one for Chris Johnston. We'll get him back near the driver's seat of this event. And he has not caught many doing this every day, but every day, big upgrades. Just got a stud for this place. I don't know if you saw it, but I uh, had one come up and just bun it. And I didn't know if it was like a 12 inch or a three pounder. And I probably made 10 casts within that five foot area. And finally on the 10th cast, that thing come up and absolutely crushed it. And <laughs> it was a giant. It doesn't get any better than that. This type of fishing is fun. It can be heartbreaking at times, but it's fun. This is the area yesterday afternoon I came and I lost a giant, lost a, had a three hit my frog and got a piece of them. And the first day I got a one just under four here. So trying to work this really slow and thorough and uh, see if we can get one more of those giants. There's some big ones down here. Mm, that's about the biggest shot of the day so far. I like far. this area just because I haven't seen another tournament boat here at all. So we got all this, it's about 400 more yards of this. The best part is just coming up, I think. That one was for just, just. 
bumping it the first time. Seeing KJ Queen pop in the top 10 in ninth place where he started the day. He's mm -hmm. one of our lone guys in pool seven, right. making Lake Onalaska work. Hopefully we'll have a camera with him tomorrow, be able to show you a little bit different would like to see that. vantage yeah. point. Because that's a wide open place that can yeah. get affected by all of the current we've had. So it'll be interesting what it looks like difference wise. Certainly brighten the day for Chris Johnston. Would for anyone. There's not a whole lot of those there available. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of areas that you have to yourself that he yeah, just said. That that those, those, he said the thing I like about this area, I got it to myself. The leaderboard right now does not reflect the upgrade he's going to receive for that, but expect him to be hoisted way on up there. Big changes going on right now. Keith Combs, Brian New Matt area though. Everyone all tight. Game changers out there, though, that we just saw. So, what comes next? Well, we will find out. Take a break and come right back. Whoa! Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome back to my final Saturday here. 47 anglers gunning for two spots on Championship Monday. This time around, we just saw Chris Johnston, who, uh, for the umpteenth time this year was your day two leader. Yes, uh, it's a good point. Yeah, it's a really good point. Absolutely, and he uh, he fell out of that lead, had a slow day going. One fish changes the whole landscape. Uh, four pounder put him on top by an ounce. Let's get out to Brandon Lester. First time he bit it. He's not giant, but he's a darn good coal. Yes, sir. I don't know what it is about that little spot, but I caught a good one right there yesterday, too. I think that might be a three pounder. Nope, two and three quarter. Still a good one though, skinny. on catching them here Been in the top 10 for a while now back into the top 10 well, like we said it's not like he or Chris Johnston have not done their oh. job it, it just comes down to they got beat yep. for the angler of the year that's all that comes down to Chris Johnston measuring that one right there they have to be 14 inches small mouth and large mouth here in order to go into the live well. We're getting a little action here. This is where I had him just up ahead of us where I had him come up schooling on day one, just over tall eel grass. And sometimes they get in these sparse pads and they didn't do it at all yesterday. It was probably too windy, but I don't think they really like doing it in the rain, but it just makes me feel comfortable that at least I know there's a group of largemouth in this area. And if they're not schooling, they should be somewhere in this pads or duckweed. Just gonna work nice and slow through here. Try and get 
Two more good ones. Every time that we've had a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament here, it is staggering how many largemouth will get into a confined stretch. We talk about a one cast spot like we got to see this morning mm -hmm. on camera, but just how many uh, hundreds and hundreds of bass will get into an area. My uh, two smallmouth spots didn't pan out. And then where I wanted to go try and catch some largemouth kind of on a chatterbait, it was blown out. I was kind of worried that was going to happen. And then uh, over in Stoddard, I had an area similar to this where they kind of get on top of the eelgrass and blow up and I can get the other one on a frog, but I didn't see one do it. I tried fishing it, but you can only seem to get a bite when they're active. We'll give this a little bit and then maybe go back there later. Probably gonna frog the rest of the day. Try and get two good ones, two three pounders and I'll be in good shape. Literally right in front of us is where I lost a couple yesterday. And guys, now that Chris Johnston has won in the live well over four pounds, he now has the ability to have the biggest bag of the tournament or a 16 and a half, 17 pound bag because there are so many three pounders in this body of water. It's pretty attainable to get 14, 15 pounds, but getting that 16 to 70, you've got, you have to have yeah. It's a, a big one. What I you know, what this tournament, and it's a, it's a Captain Obvious statement, but as well as these guys are catching them, and you don't want to use the word lucky bite because it's not a lucky bite here. You know, you have to put yourself in position to catch it, but you just feel the way this tournament has gone along that that consistent three pound average is not going to cut it. It's going to take one of those fish like Chris Johnston just caught to win this tournament. Yeah, a three pound average for a five fish limit is 15 pounds. For a four day tournament, that's 60 pounds even, and that's always been a few pounds short of the win here, which means you need one of those kickers a day, every other day, something like that. Biggest fish in the four elites we've had here is I believe a 6-1. Had Brock Mosley had a 5-8 this week on day one. Scott Martin had a 4-6 yesterday. Drew a couple more four-pounders yesterday. It's a bass. <laughs> Not a very big one. I mean, I don't know if he'll call that little bitty when I got him off. I think he will. I'm going right quick. I think that was number four. Pretty sure he's gonna come. Also hooked up, we saw in that four box when we uh, went to Drew Benton here. Was Brian New. Let's check out that. We had a good look at how many anglers are in that area down by Stoddard around Brian New. for the lead, Tommy. Just yep. one ounce behind and officially basically yep. a tie. He's got a two and a half pounder in the box. Three, six. Mm.
this just goes to show you how quickly you can fall in an event. Luke Palmer came in to day two, came into day three in tenth place. Yes. Has two bass for three uh, and a half pounds right now. And uh, because uh, how the minimum, you have to catch 12 pounds oh, here, yeah. he's fallen all the way to 39th place. Another thing we said is big, big late day calls. And obviously, two of the biggest bass that we have seen all day long have come in the last 10 minutes. That means there's plenty more to come, that is for sure. Watching the action, the fish catching continues apace here. Chris Johnston moving himself to the top spot right now. We are into the final four hours of fishing here at the Upper Mississippi River. Semi-final Sunday. Those of you who want to check it out tomorrow, you can find it on Bassmaster.com. We'll have final day coverage for you starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time. It's going to wrap up the season for us. What a pleasure it has been to bring you so much live bass fishing here on FS1 during the course of this year. And man, what a great day. We are <laughs> wrapping it up on a high note. That is for sure. The catching continues here, and it has been remarkable. So, so impressive out here. The best in the world doing what they do in a special place like Pool 789 in the Upper Mississippi River out to Matt Airy. Yeah, it's really slowed up. I'm actually kind of on the secondary pattern here. I'm uh, I'm running some little sand drops. Problem is, the fish just aren't set up really good on them. It doesn't seem like because the south wind's blowing hard against the current. And uh, we're gonna give it a little while, run a few of these places and see if we can. We, we caught one good one doing this yesterday, but I haven't really expanded on it. So I'm gonna try to expand on it some today. And I've got a few places I wanna try. I'm gonna throw a Carolina rig and top water around a little bit. We just had a bite on top water. And there was a bite on the Carolina rig, but it felt little. But we're gonna keep keep running a few of these little drops here and see if we can't pick up a three pound large mouth or three pound small mouth because I've caught both on these places in practice. Both species, that is. Throw a little worm up there, see what they do with it. It's only a foot a foot, foot deep on top of these drops. And uh, it's crazy, you think you think even when it's calm, you can see the fish swimming around up there on, when they get up there and feed on them, unless they start blowing shadow out of the water, it's really hard to see them. If they blend right in. This one drops off right off the end of it in about eight, nine foot of water. And I'm just fishing the seam down the side of the drop here. Typical Mississippi River sand drop fishing, I guess. Right off the tree. <laughs> not gonna not gonna make the cut though. Not gonna make the cut. Uh, I feel good. I'm not satisfied with the day yet, I know that. I think we're gonna have a really good shot at AOI now. Those guys are gonna have to catch them, catch them. This is how I feel. It's hard not knowing with the points though. I feel like if I, if I can move up today in the standings, then I should be able to hold the lead because we've got a lot more ground to move upwards than the guys that are behind us. So the guys behind us in points are ahead of us in the event, so we can actually gain some ground, have more opportunity to gain ground. 
I really wanted to catch like 17 or 18 and make a run at the top 10. Cause it's been so much fun today. I'd love to go back out tomorrow. I feel like without looking at the AOI standings, Tommy, that he knows exactly oh. the AOI standings, like almost to a T. With I'm not just, saying we he need some big cheat and look, but for someone who says he doesn't look, he knows it pretty spot around. on. Close to 14 right now. And that's not going to make the top 10, but it should move us up some in the standings, I would think. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll, just roll right back through here. And we may stop on that point where there's a bunch of fish, make a few casts. See if a bigger group moved in. And then make, go fish some different water. Maybe go try to catch a smallmouth. Tommy, since we've kind of gotten to know Brandon Polinick over the years, we've known that he is a winner. He has won on so many different levels, not only in the Elite Series, but he's won through the Opens and the Bass Nation to get yes. there. And that's where we had the introduction to him was the 2011 Classic down in uh, like Venice, Louisiana. It. Yeah, down near New Orleans. But then getting a great start to his Elite career in 2012, winning at Bull Shoals, did that in dramatic fashion. Had to go to the hospital to get a hook <laughs> removed from his hand there from that tournament. But a very, very young Brandon Pollan took the title in 2012 there. Yeah, the northern reaches of Bull Shoals, a submerged bridge, very important to his victory yeah. there. Yeah, we actually got out on the water, but really if you look at This what, was the season. If you really look at what he's done in his entire career, the dude does go for broke and he finds very off the wall, oddball schools of bass that a lot of the rest of the field just completely misses what he did in that tournament right there. One of the longest runs all four days out in the Lake Ontario, accomplishing winning that tournament, getting into the Bassmaster Classic. And then you see a tournament like Sam Rayburn. I mean, this was a big bass beatdown. And not only that, you've seen him in tough tournaments, you've seen him in heavyweight events like this right here. And the one thing you could say, as his career has gone on, obviously one of the best deep water anglers with his electronics, got to see that at Lake, Lake Champlain in 2020. But what we're learning as his career matures, he is one of the best all around versatile fishermen that we have ever covered on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Not only did he come back in 2020 and win at Lake Champlain, then he turned around in the fall of the year and did something that was also diversified his winning you know, portfolio for his career at Santee Cooper Lakes, a place, I mean, we had seen him win deep water, smallmouth and largemouth, you know, at Bull Shoals, we saw him strictly smallmouth at the St. Lawrence and Champlain. That's what he's been deemed as, but the Rayburn wins and the Santee Cooper yeah. Lakes win, those two really stand out to me as really showing his ability to come down south and learn it. And there's been a lot of anglers that we've covered that come close. They come close to winning tournaments. They come close to winning titles. When this dude smells it, when he smells it, when he is close to a trophy, he has proven throughout his career he will pretty much seal. You do not want him hanging around on a championship Sunday or Monday. One thing he has not won and accomplished is the Bassmaster Classic that's still on his radar. But like Such has said, if he does pull off, which it looks like he will, winning Progressive Angler of the Year as he's hooked up right now, he will be the 12th angler to do so, have more than one Angler of the Year trophy. And the thing you pointed out earlier, Ronald, he has not finished below 17th in the Angler of the Year standings in the last eight years. Not yeah. big enough. I'm going to check on these fish, though. Just make sure. And I mean, comes from Everyone's fat and happy. A part of the country. You don't 
see that yeah, on the elite. Yeah, never go. Idaho. Fish where yeah. he, right. Where we don't, he learned to fish. Look, he totally. goes and fishes other people's backyards. Uh, you know, we don't go to tournaments in Idaho. No. Uh, I think uh, South Dakota was the closest, and that's still about a dozen hours yes. away from where his home is. He's taking a load off right now. Yeah, he's a real good. He looked hurt. back in the yeah. he looked in the live. You did one not see him enough. do that yeah. yesterday. No. no. <laughs> and that's the one thing that 2013 win at the St. Lawrence River. It was one week after this event. He led after two days, got DQ'd because of the culling infraction on the wrong side of the river, Minnesota, Wisconsin waters. Ends up having to win that event to make the classic. Doesn't do so, DQ'd, goes around to the next tournament at the St. Lawrence River, has to win that one to make the Classic, and does. Does something that no one else had done, 100 boats in the field, only one to run out to the lake, and did it to perfection. All four days. And yeah. it's not to, like to he was running class. to the lake. He was running out way out, yeah. into one the lake. One yes. four-pounder coming right up. He has 11 of Idaho's 16 Classic qualifications. <laughs> Happy to celebrate one of the best ever to come up, come down the pike, and that is that man, Brandon Powell, right there, getting the job done here absolutely at our final stop of the year. That's the leaderboard as it stands right now. You see how tight those scores are. Everyone within three, wow. three pounds of change. Man, oh man, what have we got coming tomorrow? Gotta to start thinking about that. We'll be thinking about finishing this day up here on FS1 for you in just a few minutes. We will be right back. Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Can you get one more day, one more day oh, out of this season? Oh, there's, there's some buddies He's right good there. Good point. Good so, so friends much coming out. Coming. coming out to greet you there. Yeah, one more day if you make it into the top ten at the end of semifinal Sunday. There's your leaderboard right now. And you see Gerald Swindle, KJ Queen, and Brandon Lester. There's your good. Want them in there too. Those guys right above that cut line right there. Again, we're only taking 10 in championship day. And right below it, Scott Martin, who held the lead wow. earlier today. A little surprised at that yeah, today. I am too. He had Absolutely. a strong, strong, had that forceful yeah. start. Yeah. Matt Aaron, who had a Window. great day one, kind of fell off considerably on day two, fighting his way back, trying to get up there and get in his top 10 for this year. Paul Mueller, Brandon Heron Cardin, and Mueller all the right rest. There. Heron and Mueller are two of those that are winning in, guys. They need it, Absolutely. and so if they slide in tomorrow, they might try something a little off the wall to try to get a, a victory. Well, we're going to take a slide on down. Slink. Number eight right here, Chris Johnson with a big one about a half hour ago. Locking that frog in his hand. Good one. Real good one. This is the one I need. He's a solid three. Come on, baby. Yeah. Mm. That's the one we're after. Well, he football. is a handful, isn't he? Mm, his last he two came, a, came up and blew up over this eel grass. Might not be three, but he's a good one. <laughs> That's how we're after. Let's wait in a second. It makes sense why Chris said that he has a lot he of this area to himself. He hasn't seen any boats here. A yes. lot of the anglers this week have tried to, there's eelgrass everywhere, but they're trying to avoid some of these areas that are really compact with eelgrass. A little cleaner. And this whole little cleaner area, yeah, this whole stretch water. has been eelgrass, and it's maybe unpressured fish. They're just going to bite when you need them to. 215. As close to three as he can get. That is a 15 ounce coal there. Good one right there for Chris Johnston. He said if he could catch a couple threes out of this area, he has definitely done that. We go maps on over to oh, Brian yeah, with our maps. Yes. That's what we're gonna do. It's plural. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Right across. The river, a little bit north of Chris Johnston right now. Going to take a look at our marathon peak performance started early and often with Brian New. 
really kind of dissecting his day. It's slow, it was grimy yesterday, fishing in an area with a lot of pressure, finding one of those just perfect one cast sweet spots. That area has produced a lot of fish. It's produced a lot of top 20s, but Brian New landing on him this morning, not moving his boat, kind of rotating through a swim jig, a lot of soft plastics. Kind of when he fell off the pace yesterday, he almost discounted him coming into this semifinal Sunday. Sharing this area with his buddy, Austin Felix, who won the Bassmaster Elite Series last week here on FS1, Lake Oahe. And this one kind of looking like it's gonna be way too close to call. That'll work. We said as we opened up this tournament on day number one, every time we come to the Mississippi River, it is an absolute shoot shootout. But if you look at Brian News Day here today, marathon peak performance, he definitely moved up the leaderboard. Everything in his live well, all solid three pounders with room still to move as a two pound 12 ouncer at 10, 11 a.m. But all around marathon peak performance, kind of out of nowhere, Brian New. Room to move and time to move. Still three hours remain in the fishing day for our anglers here, our 47. We've made it to today. And we were told before this tournament started to keep your eye on this region of Pool 8. And it has been a big player all week lo long. And not only that, reloading every single morning. I don't think he's big. I think he got me in the weeds. It's way bigger than I thought. <laughs> Take that bad boy. Thought it was gonna be a dink. I get rid of that two two. All of a sudden we're cooking. I think your marathon stir. peak performance is Chris Johnston. <laughs> the last one. You can't. You can't. <laughs> that's the afternoon. Right. Take that's it back. the afternoon. He's back on top. You will over deliver, won't you? Well, you will. Two and three quarters. That's a bad dude right there. <laughs> Smallmouth. If you really look at his career, fishing grass, growing up in Canada. Really, if you talk to Corey and Chris Johnston, that this is how they cut their teeth fishing. We're gonna be a handful tomorrow. I don't think you can. Wow. What anyway, be dissatisfied with what we have seen over two days here, Mark. In all honesty, what a way to end the year. What a season. Big hats off to all the anglers, tournament staff, production crew, all of you guys. It's been oh, fantastic coming down, hanging Absolutely. with you. Another season in the books. And uh, big hats off to all the fans and viewers of the Bassmaster Elite Series. This one is far from over. Oh. But we're over here on FS1. Great way to end the season. One of the premier places we, we go. This is why. We've seen why this is a place that attracts the very best to come and compete and show how good they are. These shallow water specials just getting it done here. Yeah, baby. That's a that is a stop. Tomorrow is going to be a shootout yeah. between our top ten. Everyone, normally you say if you're within the big fish size, so within five and a half pounds, you can win. Right. Oh my gosh, they're going to be within three and a half pounds. It's going to be a tight one. Wow. Don't forget the weigh-in starts at four Eastern time. That is three local time. Well, check that out on Bassmaster.com. we got our coverage coming at you tomorrow on Bassmaster.com. You can check out Championship Sunday, the Yeti Hot Seat. Chris Dripping Johnston. hot. Oh man, just burning. Burning. Makes no Big sense. week for racing no in the state of New York. Saratoga Live is coming up next here on FS1. There's your schedule for, for the rest of our day. We've got coverage for you here on Bassmaster.com. And again, make a note, the weigh-in at 4 p.m. Thank you so much. What a great year. So much to enjoy on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We'll see you next time. Do the best, Tommy. And I'll hold you are live. Good you are live.
Maybe they just don't want to come up on top. Could be a combination. That feels pretty big. Nope. Gosh, I'm not gonna make the same mistake I made last time. I don't think he's gonna help, though. No, he's not gonna help. Come here, come here. We'll check you though. <clears throat> Got low meat to his bones. How did you get that hook? Managed to get all three points of that treble. I don't think he's gonna be big enough to help, though. Decent fish, though. That skinny one's our smallest. He's the longest one we got, but he's the lightest. Yeah, not gonna make it. That's a fun bite, though. Fourteen. No, he's like two fifty. Oh, he's like a two and a half. He's like two fifty four or something. That big, long, skinny one. Huh? Yeah, but I mean, it's not light enough. <laughs> I need like a five pounder. Something just swirled right there. I got something. Nope. If you don't start getting bigger, we're gonna have to leave you.
still see a few sitting on that ledge, though. One literally just blew up right behind my boat. I'm gonna head for the spillway. Mm. 
That's why I was off, isn't it? I mean, the TV. See that sand drop real good. Oh, I can see it now. understand they don't bite the wacky worm when it's not sunny I bought caught the big one on it though didn't I forgot about that good lord seagull well, we know the bait's up there on that flat. Oh, they're chasing bait down there. I just saw him come up scoping down there. If I don't fall in, we'll go down there and catch one. Don't try to get my top water bait. Don't even think about it. You do, I'm gonna reel you to the boat. It may not hit a top water bait. Feeding on them little shad. May want that stupid Carolina rig or something. That didn't work.
Oh, my leader just broke. Something just happened. Huh. It caught my guide. One of our guys trying to come in here. fish <clears throat> wasn't sure he bit like a little one but then he pulled small mouth you can't really tell Well, this place has been loaded with fish. I haven't caught a great big one off of it, but uh, there's not even any fish here right now.
crazy. All right, make a little move over here, another spot. That's where I caught my best one yesterday. I'm gonna spend a lot more time there today. Oh, the four pounder when he was out there skiing around. Yeah. How much do you think that fish weighs? You're pretty dang close. Like, not two pounds, ten ounces, like. Yeah. It was like 2.17. Oh, you're the you freaky girl. You crazy girl. Are you skinny? You need you need a meal. He's trying. He's like I'm trying to get a meal. You hooked me in the face. That's the thing. That one I lost earlier could have been one of those. You know, or it had a big old mouth on it. But it might have been skinny Winnie. Back on one of the points we caught. Trying on to catch a big one. They're all around me. They're just not caught one They're pretty quick. Like my yeah. second cast or something. Kind of at a, a different angle. I don't necessarily like the angle I got. I can't see where that grass is. It's a real specific cast. Be on the edge of it. I can see it on the 360, but I can't see the back side of it because the front side's blocking it. I can see them no, laying out really. here in this hole. I'd rather hook them on my corner. I can see the bait. Uh, one single hook. But I don't know, it just they're being difficult. Whenever they're blowing up through a thicker mat, they tend to get this one better. No flat bottoms loud. Uh-huh. Not if I'm just fishing straight pads. You need to sound like I'll my hot water. Uh, Getting blown up on. Like a buzzing style toad. Grass. Generally. I mean. 
dirty, dirty grass. Send it. Hmm. Starting to dry out and feel a little better. with the pike. Kind of cut across the top of the water. I'm staying in Stoddard, we're in the house. All I hear, all night long, like 50 trains a night. How many trains for real? 10 trains a night? At least? Yeah. How many trains per night? 50? <laughs> 
Yeah. Not as much duckweed as what was in here before. There's a lot more duckweed blowed up. Still in alive next. That place I was catching. What's up, everybody? There's perch in here. They grabbed this thing. Located them though. They move around in this grass. Following bait. I looked out there with the pound up with the live scope and I could see bait. You can see it on the screen right there, perfect. See it right there, there's all the bait. That ditch. Right there is all the bait. A lot of fish out there too. I don't know what the species they are, but. Obviously, there's one right there going across the screen. I found them, hopefully. bait right here. A lot of bait. More bait here than I've seen anywhere else. So it might have oh, it might have moved right over in here. Oh that's a good one. That's a big one. We found them boys. That's a big one. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Them, dude. We finally found them. I hadn't seen anything on the graph the whole time I've been out here. We found them. We had to wreck them, dude. I could see them all out there chasing the bait. <laughs> there you go, babe. That's for you. We found them. Now we just got to settle down and catch them. That's a good fish right there. Paying attention to your electronics. Looking where the bait is, looking for the little depression, seeing activity, being patient. It's a big deal. Big, big deal. Huh? No, a worm. Put that on a worm. Did one get on the spillway? 
probably be somebody up up there, but I'll give her a shot. Definitely gotten tougher. <laughs> to just, you can't just go around and get bit. <laughs> you got to be around a bunch of them. Seems like. I got this little bar that's loaded with smallmouth, or it was, but. I'm afraid that muddy water has got to it. Probably just a matter of time before I get hit by a bow fin or a pike, too. This stuff just looks too good. Not, not be one. Let's roll. Darn it. Dang crease of those pads, I get stuck. Come on, fish, eat my frog. One big bite. One more big bite. Again, there we go. That helps. Ooh, it just came off. Get rid of that yellow one, that's a nice fish. That's what's here. Not many, but they're good ones. They're good ones. That's a nice call. Long time since we caught a keeper. Nice Ooh. call. Look at they're pretty here. They're, they're a special kind of bass. Little mouth and big body. We got one more baby. And we're gonna get rid of him. Two hours to get her done. Big time, buddy. Big time to call. Quick.
dude, those are, they're like chasing my bait, dude. <clears throat> wow. Got one going down to it. shallow but it ain't too shallow for these suckers. Okay. Oh every fish will get shallow son. If he got any shade or food, he gone. Can't believe I ain't got a bait. We're gonna have to get out of here. One o'clock we're out of here. weed in there because I ain't Understand. I mean, it can't pass through itself. Okay. There's more frog. There's more frog. Caught some 
nice fish this week on that right there too. Look at log. Out here in these grass beds, you see them swimming around. You can throw this over there. Yes, trench. Little channels in here. That's where all the bait is. It was over there in my little hole, but it's moved. It's moved down. Now we just gotta get these fish to react a little bit. Let's run back out toward the front of them, start again. Guys, we're out here. Come on, man, stupid thing. Oh, whoa, that was cool. They were chasing it, dude. These things are acting crazy. They're inter like, I don't know if they're all bass, but they're like, they're type of fish and they're chasing stuff. I'll say that. That's exactly where I caught that, that nice one there too. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at the Mississippi River is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Two hours fishing time left for these 47 anglers who were left here today on semi-final Sunday, Bassmaster Elite on the Mississippi River, La Crosse, Wisconsin. 
trying to crack that top 10, trying to get in the top 10, extend that season for one more day. You don't want to be, this to be no. the last day. We look at our top 10 right now. The personnel has, with the one exception, has not changed no. since this morning. Their order has changed, but that shows how hard it is to make a move up at this place. It was a close event coming into semifinal Sunday. Still a very close event, but a couple big catches before our break. Chris Johnston with a couple big frog bites. Going to take a look at our Toyota midday report. Really the story obviously coming into this tournament, coming into this third day of competition is going to be one angler. In your Toyota midday report rebounding mm -hmm. after a miserable day two Saturday performance here on the Ugh. Mississippi River. Changing his starting spot and really changing his technique, getting it done with a soft plastic jerkbait. Brandon Polinick, it is fair to say if he has no penalties, makes it back to our weigh-in on time. He will be your 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year, two times over. Much better feeling vibe in the boat of Brandon Polinick today, catching sometime two at once. Oh uh, yeah, two at once. Yeah, exactly. Getting it done with a big storm top water bait and that change that starting spot where he began his quest for his angler of the year title paying off in a big way catching a ton of fish early this morning really within five miles of our takeoff the entire event for Brandon Power big hats off really kind of saved his season for that angler of the year quest in the last 90 minutes yesterday. Absolutely, as you said, uh, his, his big this big uh, move was yesterday at the end yes. of the day. Absolutely grinding it out. We're going to get down near the Stoddard area, of pool number eight right here with Matt Airy. A lot of our other competitors in the top ten fishing that is. It's not like we talked about this on our FS1 broadcast. It's not like you just went down there and cut a check. There was very, very small, small sweet spots, one cast areas. Guys like Matt Airy, Brian New, Brian Schmidt exploiting. There's been several anglers that had fished that area the first two days of competition that are not fishing today. So you had to know those little sweet spots. One angler leaving pool number eight, really one of the first times we got to take a look at Keith Combs all season long. And he is one of the anglers. This is a win and you are in the classic. Keith Combs finding himself so still in the mix. Yeah, Keith Combs with a tough season overall, even with a top five standing in this event right now, 66th place in our Progressive Angler of the Year list. So it is a win. When I say you're fishing for only yourself, that is the guys who cannot help anyone else with a classic or with a win this week for the classic. They can only help themselves. And that's what Keith Combs is doing very well. And we're kind of seeing a little bit diverse, not only a Carolina rig, but also a frog that really got eaten up on day two of this event. Yeah, most of Combs yeah. fish on day number two coming on a sexy frog. Is. Got a good one right there before our break. Sitting with a very, very solid limit. Taking a look at Keith Combs right now, unofficially just under 13 pounds. But the story of the morning, Brian knew with not a bad, bad day number two, a solid stringer. Starting down near the Stoddard area, just around the corner from Matt Airy. A lot of swim jig, a lot of soft plastics, and that's been really the theme. All of these, that is a good one right there, Ron Moore. A lot of these anglers starting with either a bladed jig or a swim jig, and then backing it up with soft plastics. And it's kind of strange because we did not see that quality with Brian New on day number two. Not the case here today. He has definitely hit his day one mark. He had 15, 15 on day one, 13 pounds yesterday, a little drop back. 15 14 today though like you said 10 casts or 10 minutes he had his limit this morning and he has stayed in the top three since then but the guy who has recently tommy taken over the lead because of a couple key bites this afternoon chris johnston yeah, chris johnston who has started the day two with the lead uh started day three rather with the lead as he has done so many times this season and uh promptly became the slowest start of the day but that was to change Exactly right. The only thing that was really strange about this morning, caught a lot of fish on a bladed jig and a med rig yesterday, a lot of quality smallmouth. That was about as big as smallmouth, definitely not comparing to what he caught there on day number two and stayed there for a long while today. It reloaded, but the quality not there this morning. It's when he decided to pull the plug on that primary starting spot, that little sandbar mixed in with a little bit of rubble. It's when he went and threw his frog right before our break, catching two big largemouth to put him back in the lead. 
looking for yet another Bassmaster Elite Series trophy. That is your Toyota Midday Report, Tommy Sanders. Not in our Toyota oh. Midday Report, but certainly part of the part of the deal all day long, especially early today. A fast, fast start for Scott Martin. Scott Martin uh, doing his best to to fight back after falling out I of that he's real big. top tier. <sighs> I mean, giant if it's a bass. Real, real big if it's a bass. Pa bass, big bass, nice bass, nice bass. baby first cast with a little adjustment first cast with an adjustment four pounder dude they didn't even get to the bottom it didn't even get to the bottom boys Woo, look at that right there look at that, that's a humpback that's a mississippi humpback yeah that was awesome dude i threw it out there it sunk to the bottom it just was tight i was like huh oh! dude the winning bag is right out there i'm telling you dude those are bass on the screen Nice, dude. Give me some of that. That's Bassmaster's Classic for sure. That's a big one. Wow. Couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. I'm not even going to tell you. He just, nice. He's just a nice one, as old Schmitty would say. He's just a nice one. Move your feet, please. Okay, dude. TH Marine dude, can see the sky a lot higher wow. than it was it's throughout like the course of this morning. The rain going front, the weather so. having moved on through and uh, on the back end of it right now. High of 83 tomorrow, well, low of 61 ago. tonight. Mostly cloudy tomorrow. We don't know exactly how cloudy it's going to be, but that's uh, cloudy is something that we, oh, no. we we like here. More great bass fishing weather, no doubt. It has been a fantastic yeah. bass fishing day today. We had light rain majority yeah. of the morning. Pretty much light winds. It's been the case of the day. We're almost the case of the whole tournament except for day number one. If you're having a great Sunday, it's a, it's a great Sunday here in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, Tommy Sanders, Mark Zona, Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon, ah. uh, with you all day long. We've got another hour of fishing to show you here. Uh, as we get closer and closer to weigh-in time, not too early maybe to start thinking about tomorrow, although we still have plenty of business to take care of today. Anything emerging as something that's going to look strong for one more day to you, Mark Zona? Yeah, you know, really, I think the thing to definitely watch throughout day number four, Championship Monday, is... Every single day of this tournament, it seems a different starting spot. A flurry in the morning. This morning, we got to see Brian New. Day number one, we got to see Jay Shakurit and Scott Martin. It, it comes down to, and it's, it's impossible to predict, which one of those starting areas is going to give an angler that 13 to 15 pounds to where he can gamble, flip, or throw a frog the rest of the day. And at this point right now, the, the, you can do whatever you want. This term is way too close to call because it's been inconsistent every single morning right. for those better than average size stringers to at least start the day. One thing that I'm thinking about, Tommy, is that the Progressive Angler of the Year race, we've basically pretty much secured it for Brandon Polinick in, in studio. Watching his morning, we know all he has to do is make it back, but kudos to Chris Johnston and Brandon Lester yes. putting on a show. Yes. They both have moved up, and they're in the top 10 this week, put as much pressure as they possibly could have done, but it's hard at this point in the stage of the season. It, it ends up becoming out of your hands, and Brandon Polinick is taking control on his own today. Yeah, it's been a thing to watch for sure. A lot of drama, as always, with Brandon Polinick. And uh, it's like for him, it's going to be a happy ending. Take Let's get out to Drew Benton. Slink on over to the west side of Pool 8. Drew Benton, who's been quiet and steady all tournament. Scott Martin, that was the Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the Day, a 4 5. He's back in fifth place. Wow. Still a few of them up there. I don't think this one will help me. It might. A 
looked bigger when it jumped. Nothing to shake a stick at as well, but Drew Benton with his great end of the season run, Oahe in here, he is fourth in our progressive angler of the year race. He has moved up right behind the trio at the top. Well, let's see Brandon Polinick making his way just below the Onalaska spillway. We got to see that earlier this morning with Drew Benton. Actually, Brandon Polinick catching a, small a mouth. few big fish there on day number one. Oh my gosh, stay on there. Get in here! Yes! That should help. Yes! Skinny. Been fighting all that current. Biggest one of the day, though. About a half pound upgrade. Did it not save it? No, it saved it. Check out number two. It's just a little longer. Crazy that that's our smallest one. Yeah, you're a little thicker. I mean, it's gotta be right. I know three's bigger. You said it was three and a quarter? Uh, he's just under. mentioned it earlier on Fox, but what a day to have. Instead of easily just backing your way into AOI, you've done enough work and just sustain and be okay. He Shut the door his, today. He has had his best yes. day of the yes. week today yeah. to put a stamp on it. He endured enough stress yesterday, <laughs> I would say. New cameraman in the boat today, maybe. Really? Maybe, maybe yeah. Is that who's, well, who's in there? I don't know. I know it's, uh, you broke up the power couple? Well, you know, we had to make yeah. a quick switch at the end so they had already allocated some others. Moves them back up into the top 20. And just clearing the harbor to sail that big old angler of the year ship in yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day. We're getting pre pretty close to calling dispatch and let them know that we're ready to dock this ship. Yeah. You know what I mean, no, Tommy? I think, I think, absolutely. 1477. <laughs> A little movement at the classic cut line. Brock Mosley is now 42nd. Carl Jacobson is 43rd. Hunter Shrike has four fish today. He's fallen to 44th. Our cut currently is 43rd. You saw Scott Martin catch that big one moments ago. This was one thing that was interesting. Talking to Scott last night, he said he has had a fish that size and bigger the first two days of this tournament and has lost it both times. Wow. Yesterday he had big bass of the day, yeah. so now he had will have unofficially big bass two of the three days this week. Oh, I just had something just happen right there. He kind of went full-blown Roland Martin when he caught I mean, that fish. A, <laughs> did he not? Did a little bit. I need to catch a little helicopter in his head there. Was, Chris Johnston unofficially a pound six ahead of second place about as about a as big a lead as we've seen. Oh mm -hmm. no. Do you think that's accurate as well Z? He's called out all of his two evens with a 
two four, a three four, and a two four. I, I think that's think pretty, pretty close. close. I think that's pretty close. Chris has been a lot better about it the last few events. He has. He's him. usually drastically off. Yes, yes. Speaking of the last few events, this is his sixth straight elite in the top 20. Wow. Since having three events below 35th to start the year. We've covered Brandon Polinick a lot this year. We've covered Chris Johnston. Oh, a, right. He spent as much time as anyone on camera, probably more. Finally okay. starting to get Chris hot. Johnston was frog battle start getting good. This is the 18th day of competition out of a possible for a for four days, nine elite series events plus three for the 39 total days of competition. Brandon Pollock's been on camera 18 of those days. Wow. I say Chris Johnson probably finish up AOI in third. Last year he was second, 2019 he was third. Really? Wow. But the 2020 year when we had it in the fall, that was his worst year. I think he was in the 20s. Wait correct? a second. Suit? Corey was in third. Corey in was in third. Yeah, they had that. Easy. Tell you what, we, we've not done in a long time. Third. What would that be? I'd love just one more time. <laughs> you know, Tom. Oh, 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 exactly I, right. I got it now. Gotcha. Striker Daily Trivia. Tender impression. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Here we go. <laughs> How many century belts were won during this 2022, your 2022 elite season? Have there been six? Have there been seven, eight, or nine? Gosh. Mercer said it on stage like 33 times, and I have no idea no, what it is. I know. No I'm, I'm blanking on it as well. Maybe, Give me a maybe break. It'll come what a joke. Me. Maybe it'll come to you. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We'll answer it for you. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at the Mississippi River is sponsored by Lynn Coda. Power Pole. Eater boats and by Rapala. Hour and a half left to fish. Hour and a half to lock in that spot in the top ten. Be there for Championship Monday. Striker Daily Trivia. Remember the question we ask you: How many century belts were won during the 2022 yeah. elite season? Was it six, seven, eight, or nine? Six, seven. Mark Zona eight or nine? Hold on. I am no, going don't do with, algebra right now. I am going with C8. Eight. eight. I'm going four at Lake Fork, two at Santee Cooper, two at Lake Ontario. Yes. It's either, it's yes? Eight. It is eight. All right. Eight. I'll, I'll go with eight, too. And I think it's the yep. second most we've ever had in a season other than 2008, where the entire top 12 at Lake Falcon. 2007, there were 10, so it ties for third. third. 2006, oh. at eight, too. We have a fantasy football belt that will look exactly like that here in about six <laughs> months. Uh, Taking a look at all of your century belts. And I'm going to wear it everywhere. Big hats off. Harold Swindle, Lake Fork, just kicking belts out everywhere. Even the Santee. Cool. Santee. With 19 bass. Yeah, right. yeah that Good was point. amazing. Drew Cook, champion of Santee Cooper. Up right there, Brandon Polinick. One of the only things he hadn't accomplished. 30 pound bag and a 100 pound week, and he did both he in the it. same tournament. Yep. Remember, he and Swindle tied exactly 102 2, and he sat on his lap at the hot seat. Oh, I get hot remember seat. that. We're going to slink on back down to the bottom of pool it's number moment, eight right here. Combs has made his way through out of pool number nine. See him right there at the bottom of eight. Another angler down there. Big noise hour ago. Chris Johnston, your unofficial leader. Um. Just trying to get one good bite. Um, I made a move to where I caught a couple of frogging yesterday. You probably saw I caught a real good one and some close to three. And I, I didn't really want to stay there. And I saw a couple more blow up and I didn't want to catch another two and a half to three pounder and not help me. So came back here. I'm just trying some big fish stuff. I'm not going to get many bites, but if I do in practice, they're good ones. But uh, I haven't got a bite flipping all tournament, which is kind of frustrating. But just going to go up to this little rock jetty, and then uh, we're going to go frogging for basically the rest of the day. And if I get one three pounder, I think it'd be a good day. And I think I got about the same as yesterday, so 
Should keep me in contention. One big one might put me in the lead again. But if I get a three and a half, I think I'd have probably close to 17 pounds. <laughs> I don't know how, how good you guys can see, but there's nothing like frog fishing. Just throwing that spro frog over the mats and sometimes you see them bump it. Sometimes they just absolutely kill it, but. Sorry, one sec. I don't know if I, I told you guys, but that big one, it literally bumped it like it could have been a 12 incher. And I threw back right on the spot, threw back, threw all around it, probably 10 casts. And I literally was gonna be my last cast. I threw just over it. It was in the open water. And that thing absolutely killed it. It must have watched my frog go over that mat nine times. And then for whatever reason, it didn't just decide to eat it. it tried to kill it when it ate it. So <laughs> it just makes you wonder how many fish have I thrown that frog over that looked at it and said, no, not today. And uh, I did lose, I don't know if it was a bass or not. If it was, it was a four or five pounder. It absolutely killed my frog too. So there's some more fish in that area, which is exciting. I don't think you can get another 14, 15 off it, but I didn't think I could today. And I think four of the ones I got in my live well are from that little zone. So I'm just gonna go over here to Stoddard, cut some good ones on a frog in here every day and give it at least another hour and uh, see if we can get one of those three pluses. And then overall, it hasn't been a great day, or sorry, it's been a good day weight-wise, but haven't caught a ton of fish, so just gonna keep going here and see if we can get that one kicker. Sorry, one more kicker. Ooh. Hmm? Wow. <laughs> Come again? Went a little bit early there, Tommy That's a game Sanders. plan. There yeah, we go. That's a game oh, plan. There you go. I came out of the gates firing on that one. Yeah, My fault, did. Tommy Sanders. By far and away, taking a look at what he was talking about. This bike right here said that bass did not hit the bait, tried to kill the bait, and that is what you want anytime you are frog fishing. Oh, I'd like to see that today, Tommy Sanders. Big one right there for Chris Johnston, who has caught one or two big ones. Let's hold on. Oh. oh, Chris Johnston catching one or two big ones every single day on a frog late, still with a lot of time, but that bass right there made up for a little bit of a slip early this morning, putting Chris Johnston unofficially in first place. That's your power pole replay of the day, my friend. It's hard to say that Chris Johnston's made a big move today because he was first coming into today, but his move is gonna be what kind of lead could he possibly have? He only had a one ounce lead coming into today. It could be at least a pound and a half, possibly even more after afternoon wise. But welcome into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. Wanted to do one last fantasy hit for day three of the Mississippi River. We're going to lose 37 more anglers today. That is their last day of competition for the season. We'll have 10 more crown the champion tomorrow in the final day of the year. And a couple key guys from the Midwest. I kind of ragged on them at this point of the day yesterday. I ragged on Seth Fighter and Bob Downey, Pat Schlopper, some of those guys that were Midwestern guys we expected to really show up and they hadn't on day one. Well, big moves in the last hour and a half, two hours of the day for Seth Fighter and Bob Downey. Bob Downey moving up 33 spots into today's cut. Seth Fighter moving up 42 spots into today's cut. Both of those highly picked anglers in fantasy fishing and guys that you wanted to have on your team when you came to this neck of the woods. So they definitely helped out a lot of the fantasy fishing teams. Meanwhile, when you look at the best team today, so far throughout the competition today and how it's updated, Chris Johnston top spot, Brian New with his jump up, not only starting the tournament with 15-15 and being well off in the top 10, but struggling a little yesterday, now readjusting and finding that key cast this morning. He's in our top 10, Brian Schmidt, they're, uh, they kind of work together. Brian New, Brian Schmidt kind of 
tag team sometimes on the water, and it has worked out well for both of them this week. Meanwhile, Paul Mueller and Mike Iaconelli, two guys you might not necessarily have chosen normally chalk-wise for the Mississippi River, have both shown up big. Paul Mueller doing something totally different. Coming from 53rd place on day one into the cut yesterday and even higher today. There's a couple key anglers that have moved up significant spots today. Brandon Polinick being one of those, moving up 18 spots in the leaderboard. Jake Whitaker, I think, moving almost 18 as well. There's a couple people from the mid to low 30s, maybe even the 40s, that will get into the top 20 today, and it'll change the face of fantasy fishing uh, for who not only can close out the year in deal, but also uh, the end of the year prizes uh, for the Mississippi River event specifically. So that's fantasy fishing, Rapala style, and we will get into all of the details tomorrow on how the Kings team oh, did yeah. versus wow. Tommy's team. Yeah, all I, I look forward to that. We'll yeah. save it for tomorrow. Well, not that part, not the, not the second part. Absolutely Here. not. And I'm gone. Hey, there's Dave Mercer with an hour and a half's time. Dave will be conducting his next to last weigh-in of the year. And Dave, you told us yesterday when Brandon Polinick was struggling and you said, I have faith he's going to catch two more fish. He's going he's to make it to, uh, to day number three. You were absolutely right here. And uh, certainly what a, what a guy, what a uh, worthy of all the praise we can heap on him. And two guys who pursued him very hard, Chris Johnston, of course, and, 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 and uh, uh, Brandon uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm blanking. <laughs> There's no it, Tommy. Paul and I. It, Paul it's and the I. end of the year. No, really no, doesn't no, matter no, at this no, point no. anymore, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Doesn't. You know what I mean, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just. It's too late for me. Say something. Brandon <laughs> Lester, of course. I, I, I'm so shocked. This has never happened, Tommy Sanders. Oh yeah. It's today. normally us bumbling <laughs> over our words, but it's good to know that the great Tommy Sanders is human. But uh, Brandon Polnick is not, guys. I have often said this and one of the things about him that has always stood out to me is just how mentally strong he was and we have seen what happened to him yesterday literally cripple anglers and end their angler of the year dream and we, we've said it, it happened many times right at the end of the wire and like we talked yesterday it's a 100 meter race i mean you can't run it you can't lead it for 90 meters and expect to win you you need to get to the finish line but one of the reasons that brandon polnick is mentally strong as he is in my honest opinion is his history from wrestling i mean he used to cut a massive amount of weight on a weekly basis and a behind the scenes story about brandon polnick that m a lot of people don't know He's a two-time state uh, wrestling champion. A lot of people know that. But if you look at his arm, he's got a big scar right here. Just to give you an idea of how mentally tough this young man is, he won his second state championship, and there was, I, I think, 30, 40 seconds left in the match, and he was up on points. And he there was a slip, a weird fall. He broke his arm, and that's what that cut is. That's where the bone was sticking out of his arm. So they said that it's over. Well, he literally fought with the judges, his coaches and him fought with the judges for the right to continue the match because all that he had to do is survive for another 40 seconds. You know, it's kind of like the Monty Python near no, the no. fish wound. Oh, no. <laughs> um, he's, Quite so he's hobbling around, survives that, wins his second state championship. And that's the kind of mental fortitude that Brandon Polnick has. And um, if this happens here today, which, I mean, it looks likely that it is. I mean, you guys have spoiled all the surprises, as you always do. But... I mean, he's joining a league of legends, and you look at how young he is, and to become a two-time angler of the year is, is unthinkable, but it couldn't have happened without one thing, his brain power, man. He got through that tough, tough stretch, and, and that's what we all want to see, in my opinion. You want to see a champion tested. You don't want him just to go and knock them all out, and he was tested this week. Dave, I have no idea. You're being tested right now. I have no idea what is going on behind you. But like we said, it's the end of the year. Dave, real quick, you called it yesterday. You said there is no doubt that Brandon Polinick would still put it away, even though he was sitting at this time yesterday. He was still so still. I know. It's, it's, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's, it's hard. Today. It's a struggle right now. He was sitting on three bass. Take that away. He has got the job done. He is going to hold the Angler of the Year trophy as long as he make his, makes it back to weigh in. Looking at tomorrow, looking at the anglers and how close this tournament is right now. And it's hard to gauge. I made the comment to Tommy, it really comes down to what starting spot is going to reload because that has changed every day for each of your leaders. Who do you look at for putting this one away? Oh, man. 
I mean, I'm Canadian, so I guess I got to cheer for Chris. But I mean, he he wins a lot. I mean, I think this will be his 17th top 10, and he's fished like 40 three Bassmaster events. So, I mean, I'm going to go two picks. I mean, everybody on earth wants to see Gerald Swindle slide in that top ten, make a big charge, and finally win a title. I'd love to see that. But I'm going to go Keith Combs because what a story it would be for the eight-time classic qualifier to be out of the classic and come in here and do exactly what half our field wanted to do when they arrived here, and that is take advantage of the win and you're in. So I'll go Keith Combs and yeah, I'll go Keith Combs. All right. Good pick. Thank you so much, Dave. Sorry to mess you up at the top. I'm, I'm a little over Brandon, overburdened with There has been a lot of Brandons. <laughs> so there my has apologies been. to In Brandon many ways. Lester, too. <laughs> right. Right. Dave oh, Mercer, oh, going to oh. get it started here. Oh, I backed you up, stumbling all over oh right after. So it worked it's, out perfectly. Time to take a look at your Humminbird Unlock the Lake. Your Humminbird Bird's Eye View, actually. Pool number eight. All of our anglers, it looks like they have made their way back into pool eight, any of the anglers that went down to nine. And really, that's been the major player. There was a lot of game planning for this tournament. Obviously, weather and barge traffic, whether you were going up to pool number seven or going down to pool number nine, it seems like the mo most of our field and most of our leaders concentrated on pool number eight, maximizing that time. Obviously, the area right around takeoff, looking at the Black River all the way up to the lock that goes up into Lake Onalaska. Those were big players, but really Stoddard. The Stoddard yeah. stretch of pool number eight by far and away has been the most consistent this time around on the Mississippi River. That is your Humminbird Bird's Eye View. What a gorgeous place. What a great place to go fishing. And we have enjoyed it to the maximum extent this week. Let's get back out and there's more fishing to come today to be sure, and let's get to our leader, Chris Johnston. Hold the phone on that, Tommy. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Brian Schmidt, three and a half pounder. That was a spoiler alert, Sooch. I think it was. Come on. Dirty old pike. Mm. Good bite, wrong kind. <laughs> to put it plainly. Yes. Get out there. He ate it. Kind of a you say that was a loose, dirty old pike. Dirty old pike, the minister of death out there wow. working the play in the water. Out there. <laughs> That's what no he is. Bob Kelly. Yeah. Every time we catch a pike, there. we try to do some daily trivia. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, it's a kind of a like a drinking game. Uh, in 2016, Gerald Swindle left lacrosse leading the AOI race by how many points? Ah. 2016, think back to 2016. That's a tough Big one. year for Gerald. Correct Swindle. me if I'm wrong, did we not go to Mille Lacs after? Yes, yes. you are correct. Got it. We, we got it. two years. We got it. 41. Seth Fighter won. 43 points. Was he leading by 45 or was he leading by 47? Gerald Swindle, his second Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year campaign. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at the Mississippi River is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. We are here on this day, standing on the verge of celebrating an angler for two Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year titles. We are reminded of another angler who started this day in the top Come ten. On, the great Gerald Swindle. That was back in 2004 when his first AOI title. Didn't he do so by like a single point or two? It was him and Hackney, yes. and they were yeah. watching yeah. away and yeah. waiting yeah. Hackney to see if he was going to win or not. Knocking it out there on Mill Axe. First time we went up to Mill Axe. That was a fantastic event. Kind of the Introduction to Seth Fighter at that tournament. Boy, Tommy, I, I'm mm. all over the map. Okay. Um, well, 
Well, that that's, uh, brings us to our question today in 2016. General Swindle left this place right here, La Crosse, Wisconsin, leading the Anger of the Year race by how many points? Was it 41, 43, 45? Or 47. You got a you got a memory if you can remember this number. Dart right? throw. Dart throw. Dart 43 B. 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 43 B. I'm going C. Yeah, it was either B or D for me. I think okay. it was. I feel like remember it was he almost oh, clinched no. it. Oh, oh, B. Nice. With the 50 guys going up there and he faltered. Right. Swindle was very upset that he was not putting it away. And FYI, did not well, cheat on that. The production truck did not tell me the well, answer. Combs that was faltered legit. As well, in that one, it was one of those ones where. He needed to be in the bottom seven for Combs to have a shot, and he was, but so was Keith Combs. He ended up uh, 27 points ahead of Combs. The next year at Mille Lacs, Combs We're won live. the OI championship and would have beaten Swindle. back Swindon. up. We had to come up early, folks. Two barges down there. I had three hours and 20 minutes to fish. Had to be back, so caught, I don't know, 12 pounds down there or so and come back up. And trying to call. Hadn't, hadn't called yet. Caught a few fish on a frog, but finna have to make a change and go hit me a little chatterbait place. I thought this pool was the slowest of all of them, so I knew when I come back, I had one or two little key areas, and one of them seems to be very dead. I don't know if it's been fished out. I've had two bites right on this little ditch line on the frog. Duckweeds blowed back up into the Johnson grass. I just had one hit it right before it went live right there. It's hanging over the limb. So we're going, we're going, we got an hour and 10 minutes, 15 minute run back. So hey, anything can happen folks. Y'all stay tuned. If I get me a three and a half, four pounder, I think we'll be all right. I don't know what everything else is going to shake out to be, but I believe in myself and I'm betting on myself. Did he say the duckweed blew back into the Johnston grass? He did. Oh, wow. He absolutely did. Was it did. Johnston yeah. or was it Johnson grass? Johnston or Johnson? Is there Johnson grass? Is there Johnston grass? I don't, I don't know if there's either. I've never <laughs> heard of either. No, Johnson grass is a real thing. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. what oh, it, yes. It's very, it's, it's, it's a very right common there. weed in people's yards is Johnson pounder. grass. You've heard you got a fish for them. Roundup oh, commercials talking about killing side. Johnson grass. Like never heard that. Oh, true. Look at it. Listed on the grass that it kills, yeah. Yeah. A swindle is four ounces on Bass Track Power, uh, getting in the top ten. Yeah. Anglers that went down to nine today, we knew that early this morning that there was going to be some earlier than usual barge barge traffic coming through there. Guys like Swindle Combs having to bail early. By that time yesterday, Keith Combs really only needed 90 minutes down there to get his job done. I tell you, there's several of them there somewhere. Take a look on bass track. One thing that's really cool to look at is you know, how many bass. 15 mile an hour wind. It, it, Kermit, it, he don't, it's Kermit, he gets his, his wing. Jay Shakur at 38 fish today. 38? No. Yeah, and, and I think he's honestly going to be a little bit low on bass track as well because okay. I showed you one yes. earlier yes. classified as a three pounder. Yeah. And I think that was a three pounder, but it might be a 314 or a 312. It was definitely a heavy three. Jay, with his effort today, if he sneaks into that top 10 and can maybe move up a few spots tomorrow, he is in the top 10 in Angler of the Year, uh. gaining a couple more spots to the top. What is it, eight, Such? Big not bigger nine, money, where yeah. the money gets bigger. Nine to 20th, get 10 grand, and it jumps up five grand to Eighth and up, yeah, I believe. So getting Ninth up and to up. eighth wow. would be wow. key for him. That new pad looking yeah. looking better. <laughs> oh <the> yeah. Side. <laughs> well, he yeah. gets his ROI ten grand too. On top yeah. of that, yeah. I think you broke. If you could re-rack that could the money imagine? that he could win, he could win two hundred thirty-six thousand last five weeks. That money at the age of twenty-three. Oh, it would have been a disaster. <laughs> kidding me? That was my signing bonus buy to come work here. Machine. What are you talking about? <laughs> the new skateboard.
Who do you give the edge to tomorrow, Tom? I'm, I'm still kind of giving fear and respect to Brian Schmidt. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, uh, I'm a little more worried about the pool nine guys, Combs yeah. and Swindle, because Agree. not only if tomorrow goes perfect, that's fine, but they lost two or three hours today right. of key time. N no one in pool eight is going to lose time. I think Brian knew. Okay. I'm watching like Brian that. knew. He fishes way too free to settle mm. for 13. That's a good point. I feel that's like he really can just point. get a little wild tomorrow. And the guy on the left is going to be a problem. Yeah, that's definitely. For sure. The low hanging fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Do for one. He's not leaving. I've been frogging for about two hours with no bites. And this area right here, I don't get many, but they're usually good ones. And I thought I might have just had them. Instead, it was a toothy critter. Find a new Kermit. That's the one I'm catching them on right there. Sexy shad. A lot of these fish are chasing bait, so something white, similar to a bait. Sometimes they mistake it for one. It's frogging's a love-hate relationship. It's one of the most exciting ways to fish, and it's also one of the most frustrating ways. But we've got our share of them today, so can't complain. Still need one more fish, I think, to really be in contention. But if I have 15 and a half pounds, I'm thinking I got to be within contention going into the final day. The biggest way of the tournament so far is 17. So even if someone weighs 17, I'll only be a pound, pound and a half out. Oh, it's terrifying. Josh, Josh Strasner, Strasner. Skeeter Boats, big wow. fish alert, five pounder. I'm sorry, Sue John. What's you got it? Stole, I, 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 big fish of the day. Not, that's not my place. That's your place. That five pounder is. Uh, I was going to see how key it is, but for him, he was he had dropped all the way down to 47. Oh, he was the guy. Ooh. Okay, but five pounder puts him back up above that a little bit. Yeah, all his other fish, nothing's above one point one pound nine ounces. So he's got. 11 pounds on the day. The wind is blowing my line sideways. It makes it. Hunter Shryock still on four fish. Needs to finish above 29th place to get back in the classic. It's <laughs> so little. I figured it was little. He's like 33rd currently. And then only three other anglers without a limit. Luke Palmer lost so many points today in the Angler of the Year race. He was in the top 20 in the race, now all the way down to 28th in points wow. because he has dropped from 10th to 46th today. place right now today. Man. Two fish for three, eight. He's down there with Greg Hackney and Derek Hudnall is the only people other than Hunter Schrock without a limit today. But Luke Palmer losing 36 points today. Mm. That's money, a lot of money. The table. Yeah, a shy, and man. fantasy points for my team. That just is a killer. Oh, well, that, well, that's Amen. more important than 10 grand for no, getting in the top. No, I more important. I mean, everybody's got their. Z, who do you have won in the NFC North this year? Uh, well, if the Bears are undefeated, I'm going to go with them because they're going to be. Well, they don't get to play the Seahawks twice. I don't know. The Cardinals are going to win, Ron. How's no, that? I'm just, How's I'm, that they're not in that division. Okay? No, okay. they're not All in that right. division. All right. Let's just ask you. <laughs> well, one thing to keep your eye on for tomorrow, we have seen Mud from rains definitely affecting a lot of this field throughout this week, especially on day one. Ronnie nailed it. The Root River up in Pool 8 destroyed a lot of hopes and a lot of dreams mm. of our anglers. Hummingbird bird's eye view. 
taking a great look at where Keith Combs caught him early today. And it was really interesting to watch Keith Combs on that little sandbar. You take a look at that little triangle to the left side of your screen right there. A lot of small mouth for Keith Combs earlier today. Obviously should be a big player for him tomorrow. That's your hummingbird, your late hummingbird bird's eye view. Oh, never too late to look at this oh, place. Oh, you're right about Man, that, it Tommy. It is fantastic in that little spot right there. Super, a lot of magic for Keith Combs there. What a great ending to his season. The weigh-in coming up. About one hour's time, 3 p.m. There's our fantastic oh, yes. Coast City, Lacrosse, Wisconsin. Fun town, college town, fishing town, to be sure. Today again, remember, 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 for the weigh-in. See who the final 10 are going to be for Championship Sunday. Tomorrow we get it started again with coverage right here on Bassmaster.com. For seven hours for you. A weigh in again on Bassmaster.com tomorrow at 11 a.m. We'll bring you some live mix, kind of break up the middle of the day. It's going to be a fun day, a fish catching day, and good stuff. Yeah, and one thing, listening to Chris Johnston right there, he made the comment, I think I got pretty much what I had yesterday, which if he said that, it's going to be a little bit tighter than I think we're looking at on Bass Track. By far and away, this is going to be the closest championship day possibly that we have seen all season, if not for two seasons on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Well, something to look forward to. Uh, every ounce counts. We know that all day long, all four days of this tournament. And day four coming up tomorrow. We can't wait to join you for that. Remember, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. That's when we'll see you right here tomorrow. Bassmaster.com. That is a stud. Bam, baby! Woo!